Everybody helps. Get in there. Go, go, go. <laughs> Even Trump uses his name. No, hold on. That guy's a plant, okay? Because that guy is... Trump just suggested things. Like, it didn't even get to the court process. When you say Trump just suggested things, he was trying to suggest to his vice president to make him the president, subverting the vote that right. he knew he lost. That's an attempted coup. There was no attempt, though. I mean... There was an attempt. It was when he asked Pence, can you please help it, me coup the go government? Past, did it go past a question? Okay, so question. Is it only a coup if it works? And then if it's not, what do you call it? There was not an attempt. It was a question asked. It wasn't a question. He was like telling him to like, you can do this to throw out the vote to keep me as president. Right. And Trent Pence is like, no, I can't do that. And so it went nowhere. You're right. Yeah, so. because it would be cooing the government. There, was there... Because her, her, her investigator literally uh -huh. changed the wording so she could avoid prosecution. No, the so FBI there. was yeah. not able to prove that she had intentionally hidden classified information on a server intentionally mishandled it. That's part of the criminal statute. If you don't like it, go to Congress and change the law. You have to intentionally mishandle data for it to be a crime. Done. I started this out by explaining that, you know, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a It's not about you. It's, it's not about you being a lawyer. It's about you. You're trying to sell me a story that this 60 year old boomer guy whipped up more people to break into the Capitol than the president of the United States, Donald Trump, who has spent the last four years winding people up to believe the election was going to be rigged and stolen. New people in his crowd had weapons, sent them to march on the Capitol to protest. Our, your first argument was, well, he was telling them to go that they were going to vote them out, even though he was sending them there because he said all the elections were rigged, which doesn't make any sense. You're trying to tell me that this guy had a greater responsibility for the invasion of the Capitol than Donald Trump? Why is Ray Epps intelligent enough to infiltrate the uh, infiltrate the January sixth protests, instigate and instigate all of the and instigate and coordinate. Wait, wait, hold on. Instigate riots and coordinate the first breach of the Capitol grounds. But stupid enough to text his nephew claiming he orchestrated it? That's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> what evidence is there that Ray Epps is a fed? Epps, the nobody with no standing among the crowd on January 5th said, we need to go into the Capitol peacefully. He wasn't alone in doing so and others didn't include peacefully either, to which he was immediately mocked and called a fed. The next day, Epps trespassed on the Capitol grounds as did 10,000 others who weren't arrested. Of those who remained outdoors, they've only arrested those who engaged in violence or possessed a weapon. He was almost immediately placed on a seeking information list, which he sought two days after the riot, prompting him to call the FBI's number as listed to clear his name, to which over the course of two interviews, he provided evidence that he interceded to stop violent confrontations at least twice before giving up and leaving. In June, the FBI satisfied that Epps didn't commit an offense greater than the 10K others who trespassed on outdoor grounds, removed him from the list. Here's proof that he, number 16, was still listed as March 2021. He was also interviewed by the J6 Investigative Committee, by which, in response to this conspiracy theory, he was asked if he was working for or on behalf of law enforcement in any capacity to which he denied, as have the FBI, stating Ray Epps has never been an FBI source or employee. Oh, so they have commented on this. Ray Epps has never been an FBI source or an FBI employee. Oh, okay. So they did make a statement about it. Transcripts show. Uh, that Epps told agents that he had spent much of his time at the Capitol seeking to calm down other rioters and assert support of multiple videos. Samsel said much the same thing, telling investigators that a man he did not know came up to him at the barricades and suggested his, he relax. He came up to me and he said, dude, his entire words were relaxed. The cops are doing their job. Samsel actually cites Proud Boy Joe Biggs as a motivating factor. And Samsel is a Trump supporter who doubled down while in prison for assaulting police on J6 by stating politicians should be fed into a wood chipper. Ultimately, what's the narrative about this guy? That's when he was still active with the Oath Keepers in 2011. The feds employed him while permitting him to live life entirely as a private citizen in Arizona, including buying property and opening his own business there, knowing that one day, 10 years in the future, they'd call him to DC for one very special op with his fed son and nephew. To somewhat impugn the supporters of what was a marginally politically active Donald Trump at the time, knowing 
he would go on to defy the odds to become president in 2016 only for his re-election effort to be mired in fraud, knowing that Trump would then schedule a wild protest for January 6, resulting in an apparent perfect opportunity to eventually arrest a grand total of about 1,000 of his supporters before incompetently putting their own agent on a seeking information poster for six months and letting him go back to Arizona to give interviews to several media outlets, but rather competently these law enforcement institutions all, who engaged in this conspiracy, which tend to be disproportionately compromised of or comprised of Trump supporters, have maintained perfect operational security. Of course, people like Baked Alaska figured out this grand plan while on the ground near Epps, prompting Alaska, who would later enter the Capitol, and others to repeatedly shout Fed. <laughs> I feel like a lot of these questions are the same ones that I typed here. If Ray Epps was a known FBI informant, why did they mess up and publish him on the FBI Washington Field Twitter account and their most wanted list? Why didn't they scrub his presence for choosing him for this essential mission? Why did Epps himself confess to local newspaper like, and other media? Why didn't they just arrest him immediately? Yeah. <laughs> and yet, the rather suspicious and braggadocious Epps, who gave interviews during and immediately after the riot, in which he blames Antifa for the violence, I expect more coherence in your false flags, FBI, if this is what $11 billion is getting us for shame, was still somehow able to fool hundreds of personally responsible Trump supporters spread across six different entry points on Capitol grounds because the enemy is both strong and weak as necessary. But hey, I think I found more feds. Just listen to these people stating their intent to storm the Capitol and be sure to note that the feds declining to arrest the guys who on January 4th, 2021 said, what can you and I do to a state legislator besides kill them? We should not do that. I'm not advertising that, but I mean, what else can you do, right? Nothing. And storm every state Capitol until January 20th, 2021, until President Trump is inaugurated for four more years. And then on January 6th, outside the Capitol, using a megaphone, say things like, wait, hold on, what is this stating their intent? We're here to take our country back. President Trump yesterday said, we are not giving up the White House. He said, we are going to fight. And I'm that. I mean, they're taking our country from us. Wait, whoa, 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 wait. Why is she saying we are going to fight? Hold on. Didn't she say when he said march peacefully? Oh, dude, she needed to talk to the drone tech guy. Because when Trump said fight, he just meant that like figuratively. But when he said the election was being stolen, he meant that literally. When he said march to the Capitol, he meant literally march there. But when he said fight to take it back, he meant that figuratively because people just say that. And this is a prelude to the war that is about to happen. We are not messing around. There's a lot of us that are going to be, there's more of us than there are of them. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede with his theft. When he says never give up or never concede, he means that like figuratively. Like obviously we give up because the election is on, but like we literally keep fighting, but not fighting physically, but like voting. We have to keep voting in the elections that we know are rigged um, because of the ballot boxes, but we have to, yeah, we have to fi figuratively fight metaphorically by voting at the ballot box that is being buried and hidden in the ocean uh, by corrupt uh, by corrupt voting officials. Republicans are constantly fighting like a boxer with his hands tied. Like a boxer, not as a boxer. It's figurative. See, he doesn't mean, like, Republicans aren't actually fighting, right? Like Behind his back. It's like a boxer. And we want to be so nice. We want to be so respectful of everybody, including bad people. And we're going to have to fight much harder. And Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. Because... You're sworn to uphold our Constitution. Now it is up to Congress to confront this egregious assault on our democracy. And after this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down. Anyone you want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. Yeah, we're going to walk down, down to the Capitol. Yeah! 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 Yes. Remember, all of these people, by the way, are supposed to be at work. Remember that. All these people are supposed to be at work, remember, okay? Because remember, after Trump won, and we got those epic pictures of the libs crying in the streets, conservatives said, do you know what we would do if we would lose the election? You know what we do the next day? We'd go to work. That's what they said. All these people are supposed to work. And here we are, four years later, and they still think the election was stolen, by the way. Take the Capitol! Take the Capitol! Take the Capitol! Take the Capitol right now! Yeah! Who is, is that Ray Epps shouting all the time? Peacefully and patriotically makes your voices heard. The radical left knows exactly what they're doing. They're ruthless. 
and it's time that somebody did something about it. And Mike Pence, I hope you're going to stand up for the good of our Constitution and for the good of our country. And if you're not, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. I will tell you right now. I'm not hearing good stories. Because <laughs> <laughs> Pence didn't say shit to him when he, when he begged him to coup the government. Fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Our exciting adventures and boldest endeavors have not yet begun. My fellow Americans, for our movement. <laughs> Hold on, it's not like saying fight for Trump. They're actually saying vote for Trump. It's like, it's a little bit weird. You can't really hear it well. They're saying vote for Trump. Vote for Trump. You guys hear that, right? It's vote for Trump. Vote for Trump. Vote for Trump. Vote. It's vote for Trump. It sounds weird the because they cut off some of the highs. It's the, when you encode stuff to MP3 and shit, you're slicing off like a lot of the higher constant noise you hear. It was, that's a, they're saying vote for Trump, vote for Trump. What are we waiting for? We already voted. It would have been done. They stole it. We want our fucking country back. No, hold on. That guy's a plant, okay? Because that guy is pointing out that like, yeah, we already tried voting and it didn't work because Trump said all the elections were fake. So now we need to go fiscal fight. This guy must be a plant, okay? Somebody didn't get this guy, you know, okay. <laughs> Obviously a fed. Look, he, he looks like a fucking fed. Come on. President Trump is here. Oh, Vice President Mike Pence reveals that he's a fucking fed and doesn't uphold his constitutional duty to make Trump the winner of the election. <laughs> okay. President Trump is here at the Capitol building with us. We saw the motorcade. Shit is about to get real. Thank you. Thank you. Speech is over. It was awesome. Some of you may have seen it online. It went over all the voter fraud. Yeah, uh, true. If you listen really closely, I've seen this video before. If you listen really closely in the background of this video, hold on, it's hard to hear. Wait one second. I've seen it online. It went over all the voter fraud. Uh, I am very concerned about Mike Pence. I have no idea. There's two people talking in the background. One of the guys is saying I was going to be peaceful, but Ray Epps is brainwashing me into violence. But it's really, really hard to hear on this one. I think there's a higher audio boosted version somewhere, but I'll look for it later. Yeah, what he's going to do. Did not love the way the president talked about that. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, we're walking over to the Capitol right now. And I don't know, maybe we'll break down the force. Okay, let's go! Capitol, Capitol, Oh, shit. As we know, a lot of the Trumbulls that showed up were in poor health. Most of them that died there uh, died from obesity, unfortunately. Uh, the same people that told you not to put, you know, foreign chemicals and shit into your body were dying of amphetamine overdoses and double cheeseburger overdoses. <laughs> Crazy. I guess they don't always care what they put into their body. Uh, but some of the more health conscientious ones brought a pull-up bar so they could get some reps in. Reps for Trump. <laughs> I don't know what hang my, I don't know what that meant. I'll listen. So for someone else figure this one out. Thank, finally, Trump calls them off on Twitter. 224, Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and constitution, giving states a chance to certify a correct set of facts, not the fraudulent or inaccurate ones, which they were asked to previously certify. Since Pence failed to act, we should all go home peacefully. Oh, they're saying thank Mike Pence. That might've been what they were saying, true. Bro, imagine doing this to your own vice president. Holy shit. Trump didn't even call him this night, by the way. Trump didn't even call him to see if he was okay afterwards. Where is that? Where is that? Also, keep in mind, while these guys are out here calling for him to be hung, while Donald Trump is in the uh, the Oval Office attached living room, sitting there sipping Diet Coke, watching all of this unfold with Ivanka, with uh, Trump Jr., with Meadows coming in, begging him to say or do anything, Pence is, I believe, inside still, actually making phone calls, figuring out like, hey, what the fuck is going on? My shit is getting fucked. And after all of this shit, after all of this shit, okay, people are like, maybe we should take the day off and go home. Pence was like, march your ass right back in here 
We are certifying the vote. And they did it that night. Good on him. Do you think if the mob had somehow managed to get a hold of Mike Pence, they would have tried to hang him? Uh, shit. Pisco's not here, is he? Uh, I don't think so. But any, who knows? I don't think so. I think these people were, unless like one of like the super proud boy duders or whatever did, maybe or whatever. But like I said, I feel like most of this fucking crowd is like hyped the fuck up on their own shit. Um, but who knows? I mean, like the problem is like once they get that close, like anything could fucking happen. Who knows? Yeah, the problem is like we're, we're not talking about like an individual. I don't think an individual could go up and kill Mike Pence. That would be unhinged. But like could an angry crowd that is like getting increasingly hostile? Uh, I don't know. Who knows? want to report to you guys they uh do you think so they unironically beat a cop with an american flags so i felt like they could do away but yeah but they were doing that they were doing that while fighting at the picket line to like break in right patriots and the protesters have taken the, the capitol building i'm going to show you guys what's happening right now He means Ray Epps when he says that, by the way. Let's tell Trump what's up. And he'd be like, no, just say we love him. We love you, bro. No, he'll be happy. What do you mean? We're fighting for Trump. Look at this. Even though Baked Alaska was able to accurately identify Ray Epps as a Fed, he was still mind controlled. That's a negative, Chief. They attacked the officer with the flagpole after they pulled him into the crowd. Wait, fuck, hold on. Let me go watch a video of that. Is that true? I don't remember the exact unfolding of that. Um, J January 6th, officer attacked flagpole. And Leslie Foster attacking the stairs, the police officer. It shows these terrorists dragging the officer terrorists. down the stairs, beating and stomping and smashing him with a pole flying the American flag. DC's acting police chief says it left him sick to his stomach and the officer was terrified they would kill him. Ugh, that's why I don't want this dog shit news shit. Give me, does anybody have a link to the actual thing? I the Arkansas man. Only brand known down. This video shows the moment rioters dragged Officer Mike Fanone down the steps of the Capitol, punching and tasing him. He was even pummeled with an American flag. A photo from overhead shows the officer face down on the ground, a rioter holding a police baton over his neck. Officer Daniel Hodges, who was nearly cry He's lying, don't believe him. Maybe they would have killed Pence, man. I'm not sure. You watch the interrogation of the guy who tased that officer? Yeah, that interrogation was super sad. <laughs> like, pathetic, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to go over that woman who was shot. You know that shit will come up. Bro, I, there is no shot that anybody would defend that. You're staring down... Would it be Secret Service at that point, or would it be Capitol Police? You're staring down the barrel of a gun trying to f***ing climb through a window? I'm sorry, that was f***ing wild. No shot will anybody try to defend Ashley Babbitt. No shot. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. Aww. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel. But go home and go home in peace. everybody now. Like, what are you yelling at? Oh, uh, Donald Trump asked everybody to go home. He just said, he just put out a tweet. It's a minute long. He asked everybody to go home. Why do you think so? Because, dude, we won the day. My dad said, 
We won. How do we yeah. win? Well, we won by sending a message to the senators and the congressmen. Yeah, we won by sending a message to Pence. Okay, that if they don't do as they are, as they as they, uh, their oath to do, if they don't uphold the Constitution, then we will remove them from office one way or another. I don't have any idea what's, what was in his heart about what he wanted to happen once they were in the Capitol, but he wanted there to be chaos. And I'm sure you've also had conversations. What percent of the rioters genuinely believe the election was rigged and stolen? I'd say 90 percent plot. I, it, for this crowd, they're already you're already selecting for the most like partisan Trump supporters. And then given the day when Trump is saying, I would say probably 98 percent plus thought the election was actually stolen of this crowd. That'd be my guess. Stations with other senior White House officials, as I have. As this was At unfolding least. on television, Donald Trump was walking around the White House confused about why other people on his team weren't as excited as he was, as you had rioters pushing against Capitol Police trying to get into the building. That's as it. it was happening, he was delighted. I would say I was doing my, I felt like I was doing my patriotic duty. Tonight, Frisco realtor Jennifer Ryan is speaking out in defense for her actions last week that federal authorities say were criminal. So me personally, I do not feel a sense of shame or guilt from my heart from what I was doing. I thought I was following my president. I thought I was following what we were called to do. She's referring to this moment, a now deleted video that the FBI recovered showing images of Ryan entering through the rotunda. He asked us to fly there. He asked us to be there. So I was doing what he asked us to do. So as far as- Crazy how there are so many videos saying that Donald Trump sent them there but there's not a single video of somebody saying Ray Epps encouraged me to go in. <laughs> Where, like, My heart of hearts, do I feel like a criminal? No, I'm not. Why research January 6th now? Uh, Cause I'm debating Alex Jones and Glenn Greenwald on January 6th about this. Worse yet, despite knowing all that, journalists like Darren Beatty of Revolver News, the same Darren Beatty who broke the first story about Fed involvement, that being the case of Oath Keeper Thomas Caldwell's unindicted co-conspirators, but had Revolver actually done their due diligence, they'd know that a Fed factually can't be a co-conspirator, and that by referencing other Oath Keeper charging documents, their identities comprised a friend and fellow Oath Keeper and Caldwell's elderly wife. Wait, is that true? A federal informant or a federal agent can't be a co-conspirator in a case? I don't know if that's true or not. He just says it who has maintained that Jan 6 was a Fed surrection since Ray Epps wasn't charged for advocating peaceful entry the day prior, has only praised and defended Fuentes, while politicians like Gozar, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Rogers attend his political conferences while Trump dines with him. Clearly, he must be very well connected. He must be a very well connected FBI agent to avoid scrutiny and at all of 22 years of age, very impressive. I don't know how he didn't get charged for anything. That's wild. And hey, if a 20 hour lead time of advocacy by a nobody who the crowd didn't take seriously meets the legal definition of incitement, and that in that such advocacy both has to be directed at causing imminent lawless action and is likely to cause such action, these must also be far more deserving of incitement charges, lest they be feds too. Giuliani, let's have a trial by combat, kick ass and take names, Ali Alexander, if they ratify, everyone can guess what me and 500,000 people will do to that building, victory or death. I did call for people to enter the US Capitol. I started a riot for the sitting president of the United States. I started an insurrection. 1776 is always an option. Wait, hold on. Stop the steal. A campaign to get right-wing activists to discredit mail-in voting, disrupt vote counting, and falsely accuse local officials of stealing the election. I started a riot for the sitting president. Why Ali Alexander won't go to jail for his role in January 6th. Six is always an option. <laughs> 1776. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. We're on the point of attack tomorrow. We're going to bury Biden on January 6th. Fucking bury him. Bannon. These video links suck. The Willard in the White House, the January 6th panel widens its net. What was this? We were essentially in a national emergency. Michael T. Flynn declared on January 5th during an interview. With the internet conspiracy theorist Alex Jones recorded in a luxurious suite at the Willard Intercontinental Hotel near the White House. The truth is going to come out, said Mr. Flynn. Hold on. In another room of the five-star hotel, a phalanx of lawyers and political advisor for Mr. Trump, including Rudolph Giuliani, his personal lawyer, Bernard B. Carrick, a former New York City police commissioner, and John Eastman, a scholar working feverishly on a legal strategy to prevent Joseph R. Biden Jr. from assuming the presidency, had set up a kind of command post. On the hotel's grand front steps, Roger J. Stone Jr., a longtime Trump advisor, was flashing his signature Nixon victory sign to fans as members of the Oath Keepers. A militant group protected him. So yeah, I just basically wanted to ask you about a couple of those things. I, I want to explain that, you know, I'm not a constitutional scholar, I'm not a lawyer. And so I, I'm looking at this from, you know, all the research and everything I am able to gather. Uh -huh. And 
I'm honestly just interested in getting to the truth here. And I think there's a lot of points that never get discussed in our, you know. Sure. Wait, before we get into that, can you, uh, just so people know who you are and where to find you, can you introduce yourself and let people Yeah, uh, this is, uh, I'm Drone Tech. I have a YouTube channel um, and I'm on Twitter, or X, sorry. And uh, yeah, I just basically talk about media bias. I try to add a little humor into it. And uh, a, a big topic I like to talk about is the two-tiered partisan system of standards. I, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about justice system, but it, that, that does come into it. And I, I kind of look at this entire thing through that lens of, and like I said, you and uh, Rob did get into this a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to just further get into it if possible. Yeah, sure. So I, I basically, I don't think that Trump incited or planned a riot. I don't think there was an insurrection. And I have a couple... I think factual points that at the very least raise some reasonable suspicion that, you know, that it, there was some other cause for the actual riot than Trump. Okay. Um, so first of all, just so we can kind of set a standard here, do you agree with the, you know, mostly peaceful narrative that we heard through like 2015 and 2020, as far as like the Democrat riots? Uh, for like BLM? Well, yeah, just, I mean, it was a mixture of, like, BLM, you know, Antifa, regular Democrat voters. Yeah, I think yeah. they were mostly peaceful protests, yeah. Okay. And so, like, based on, like, what criteria would you say that it's mostly peaceful? Just on the number of people riding versus the number of peaceful? I just, I saw that number a lot. 93% of protests uh, were, didn't have any violence or, like, charges or anything right. involved. That's not, uh, that yeah, number although, could be wrong. I've just read that number a lot. But Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure how legitimate that is. That sounds a little weird to me. But um, so do you know how many people were at the Capitol on January 6th? How many protesters? Um... I don't know, 40,000 or 50,000 or something? I'm not sure. No, it was over 120,000. Oh, okay, over 120,000. It was a gotcha. lot of people there. Okay. Yeah. And so the actual, do you know the actual number of people charged with violence? Um, with violence? Yeah. My guess with actual, like, violent actions. Probably, like, less than 50, would you want to guess? Well, no, it's actually more than that. It was around, I think, 372, I want to say, is the exact number, 372 people. Okay. Does that and include, when you like, say violence, does that include, like, breaking and entering and, like, obstruction stuff? Or is this, like, actually attacking no, like, officers that's, and stuff? No, that's a separate, yeah, that's a separate thing. So that would be, like, obstructing officers, attacking officers, you know, that oh. sort of thing. Okay, so over there. Uh, so it was about okay. 372 people. All right, okay. so, and then, then you got another, like, around 300 who that was, like, the public uh, or the government property destruction. And then you had the the largest percentage are, like, trespassing uh -huh. and obstruction of government operations or whatever. Okay. Uh, and so when you look at that, it's kind of weird to me that there's such this heavy focus on this relatively small group of people that got violent compared to the gigantic group of people who didn't, right? And you go back to the the speech that Trump gave. He told people to march peacefully and patriotically, make your voices heard. And he also emphasized that, hey, uh, we're, we want to promote voting out these Republicans who go along with this stolen election, okay? And... Uh, like the whole idea being, you know, use democracy, go out there, protest peacefully, and then vote against these Republicans. So there was never any call to like violence or anything. People point to, you know, he talked about fight, you got to fight and all this. Democrats use that sort of heated political rhetoric all the time. So I don't think you can point to that. And when you just look at the discrepancy between the number of people who actually got violent compared to the larger group, I, I don't see how you can blame Trump, number one, because wouldn't a much larger amount of people have done something like that if it was actually him telling them to do that? What do you think? Um, maybe. I'm waiting for you to go, do your whole thing, and then I'll do my... Okay, well... Or broadly so, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And so then you would have to ask, so who incited it? and or who caused that and i think that's a big question that has to be discussed is what actually set off the violence okay mm -hmm. and there are a lot of legitimate questions around that having to do with capitol police you know we have videos of the police removing barricades letting people in, waving them in mm -hmm. you have and i think this is the biggest uh the the what should be focused on the most is ray epps i think ray epps is way more important than what the media and you know the democrats want us all to believe because i mean look at Look at some of the charges handed down, like the uh, QAnon shaman, who was literally just like escorted around. Police tried to open doors for him to get in and then led him into uh, the main hall there. And then he got, you know, later arrested and got a pretty, uh, what was he in for like three months or something? And then 
You got guys like Ray Epps who are on video for multiple days telling people to enter the Capitol and literally storm the Capitol. He was there the night before and the day of. And to me, and he was at the front, and he admitted to orchestrating it, okay? All of this, um, and yet, despite that, he gets treated as a victim and a conspiracy theory. The Democrats defend him, the media defends him, and try to paint him as like this, oh, he's a poor victim of Trump supporters. It's, it's kind of weird. I mean, don't you think that sh he later got, years later, he gets this misdemeanor charge. Uh -huh. After people like, you know, people like me and, and Tucker Carl, you know, all kinds of people are like, what's going on with this guy? So then he gets this slap on the wrist that's not going to include jail time or anything. It's probably going to get expunged later. It's obviously done for the cameras. And so you got to ask, what's that about? To me, uh, he could have easily have incited and gathered and orchestrated the number of people who actually got violent. And so my whole thing is like the entire predicate that Trump, uh, you know, launched an attack and insurrection on the Capitol. It's totally... Uh, there is more than enough reasonable suspicion to question that, especially the fact that the media does not focus on the mostly peaceful at all. I think I remember when it was happening, like maybe the next day I saw an ABC report or something where the guy literally said it was mostly peaceful. It, that was it. I heard it that one time and never since. And mm -hmm. you got to ask, why are they not focused? Why are they so focused on the small group, but they completely ignore all these other people? And why do they ignore Ray Epps? Well, if Ray Epps incited them, you can't blame Trump, right? Okay. Um, so that's that's for now, yeah. There you go. Gotcha. Okay. So before we start, how committed are you to this position on a scale from one to ten? You're like ten. You're absolutely sure, or you're like uh, one. Like I'm not really probably like a of... seven. Okay. Probably like a seven. Probably. I'm open to okay. being wrong. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but these think... are unanswered questions that nobody addresses. It's weird. I disagree. I think there are answers to every single question you asked. Um, okay, cool. I can't wait to hear. Here's my macro perspective. This is what I feel like. I feel like um, Trump, through his continual undermining of the electoral process for years, he even did it when he ran against Hillary, but for years leading up to the process was saying the election was going to be stolen, mail-in ballots are rigged, um, and then during the actual election and then afterwards leading up to January 6th, he was repeating false claims that everybody in his inner circle told him were not true, relating to the Pennsylvania stuff, relating to the Georgia stuff, you know, that there were stacks of ballots, that there were boxes brought in, that people in his inner circle were telling him over and over again, this isn't true, he kept repeating it. And then on the day of, on January 6th, when he went to give his speech, he told people that they're stealing the election from you, they're stealing your country, uh, we need to go march on Capitol Hill and protest about it. Um, and he knew people in his crowd had guns and weapons, and he wanted to go with them to march onto the Capitol for that protest. My question, I guess, to you for the first part of this, what do you think he wanted them to protest? What was the goal of that protest? Well, um, he, he, like I said, he actually did specifically go into, I want you to go out there, protest, and pro promote this idea that we're going to vote out these Republicans who go along with the election. So you legitimately believe in your heart of hearts that Trump was saying, we need to go to the Capitol building today where they're certifying the election and protest to let you guys know that we're going to vote you out? Right, absolutely. They, just to protest uh, what they thought, what he believed was a stolen election. A lot of people believed it. And I'm why not saying you, that they were right. You, if but, you were President Trump and you had just told all of your followers for years that elections are rigged, why would you go into a protest threatening to vote in rigged elections? Right. I mean, but uh, OK, fine. That is an irony there, but it's not an, uh, an irony without uh, precedent because you know, and I heard you guys dip into this, and it's another thing I want to get into, but Hillary Clinton, okay? Hillary Clinton did the exact same thing. She said, actually, you're right, when Trump started doing that, she came out, she's like, oh, that's an attack on democracy. He's attacking our institutions, uh, right? He's, she said that. But then what happened? She lost the election, and then she said it was illegitimate, and she attacked the process. And then Democrats went on for, the, I don't know if you remember, but they had hearings for months about the voting machines. And they were going on and on about how hackable the voting machines are, implying that that's what happened here, that Russians hacked, somehow got into the voting machines, changed the votes, and uh, stole the election. Okay, and so Hillary I heard Clinton, you say, to be clear, I, real quick. Hold on, or, hold on, one, real quick. You said mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton during the debate with Rob, and uh, you said that she did it one time. No, she did it multiple times. And just like you said that Trump had this history, Hillary Clinton has a history. She Back in 2000, she made a big deal about the election being illegitimate and stolen. Uh, she did the same thing in 2005, and then the same thing in 2016. Okay, so Hillary Clinton conceded the election the night of, number one. 
Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. She did, sort right? Of. Trump didn't, right? What do you well, mean, sort of? Wait, officially, Hillary Clinton, wait, yes. Yeah, yeah. So Hillary Clinton officially conceded the election the night of, right? Um, Donald Trump correct, did not. Yeah. Donald Trump tried to claim that he won before the votes were counted, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. That's a pretty substantial difference, right? Uh, you well, think? I would say it isn't, a, isn't in, I would that, say it's a uh, in and of itself like pretty I would horrible? say it's a difference. I would say. Yeah, that somebody would, would try that somebody try to claim that they've won an election before the votes are counted. Isn't that pretty anti democratic? Isn't that probably one of the worst things you could do as president? Uh, I, I don't. I want to. Well, I don't know about about anti democratic. I mean, it's just free speech, and I'm not sure that wait, hasn't wait, been it's done before. Freedom of speech to say I'm going to win the election. We need to stop the count, and I don't want all the votes counted. You don't think you think that's just freedom of speech? You don't think that's a little anti democratic? Well, I mean, yeah, but in principle, it's anti democratic. Yeah, okay. but that, that obviously never happened, though, right? I'm not talking about what happened. I'm talking about what Trump tried to do or what Trump said. What Trump said was anti-democratic. We should stop counting the votes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Hillary Clinton conceded the election. So I think that's a pretty substantial well, she, difference. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but when you say that, like she conceded the election, okay, officially, but what else did she do? She also launched the whole, you know, Russian collusion thing, which was uh, the campaign, Hillary campaign hatched that scheme, which the FBI knew about and yet went along with it anyway. So after she lost, she officially concedes uh -huh. and then the whole Russian collusion thing comes on. Uh, and the lead investigator of that just happens to be the guy that was the lead investigator against her, who was also a supporter, who also who was also a lifelong Republican as well, appointed by a Republican and has been a Republican and continues to be to this day. Right. Uh, uh, no, no, I don't think so. He's a big Hillary supporter. So Call I, I don't me? know about that. Call me is not a lifelong Republican. No, not come, not come. I'm talking about Peter Strzok, the lead investigator oh. of Hillary clinton who went through what did he do he went and changed the wording of her charges uh to basically so she could dodge any uh, prosecution they it basically he downgraded the severity of what she was being accused of and okay, so that basically I, okay, saved her i don't know if that's true but also i don't want to do it, it i know is, that yeah, every I single link that's fine but i don't know why every single conversation about donald trump somehow always leads back to hillary clinton's emails um, well, I explained it at the beginning. I'm, sure, so I'm so looking let's back at up. this through the lens of consistent standards. Sure. I'm not. Well, we could get into consistent standards, but first we need to even see what Trump's done, because I can't get conservatives to admit that Trump's even done a bad thing. It's shocking to me that it took you like three tries to even admit that Donald Trump trying to claim he won the election before the votes were counted isn't clearly an anti-democratic thing. That's a really bad thing. Well, should ever be okay. trying to, right. That should be an easy like, yeah, that's bad. Right. We should easily be. Able right. to say I did bad. say it. I did say it's bad. But okay. I also said that this is a bad that uh, Democrats had already set a precedent for doing. They already set the standard that this is okay to do no no democrat has ever not conceded when they've lost immediately and tried to claim that the election like was rigged that the voting machines and everything else were absolutely rigged. they did that in 2016 okay um, they had hearings where they said that for months had hearings that's different than like you know i'm gonna just declare myself the winner you're allowed to have your day in court donald trump had all of his days in court everybody's allowed to pursue their thing in court that's different than trying to circumvent the process and well, no, but he can never right? circumvent it. Well, he can never circumvent it simply by saying it. I mean, it would always end up in a court. Right? Sure, we're getting there. Yeah, but okay. So, well, back in, <laughs> what? But I'm not even talking about the charges against him now. I'm saying that I'm not talking about the charge. I'm just trying to establish like some ground level thing of like what is happening, so that we're at least in the same world. Okay, so. When Donald Trump is telling you that the election is stolen, the voting is rigged, they've rigged it in all these different states, and then we're going to go to the Capitol, we're going to fight like hell, we're going to take our country back, they're stealing the election from you. Why would anybody there think that the protest is that we're going to threaten to vote even harder when you've told these people that voting doesn't work? Well, I mean, well, for, okay, so... Democrats have done the exact same thing. Why are we so talking about I, Democrats? I don't really I'm care. just asking about right. Donald Trump. I don't Trump care. That, well, if you don't right. care, don't then care just admit it. They just say like, yeah, they were going there to probably to try to circumvent the electoral process. That was the goal. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying oh, that. Oh, okay. Then that, I just want to know what you I, think they were I'm protesting. That, no, no. I'm saying the hypocrisy of that. The irony of saying I don't care about the hypocrisy. I'm not things. here to what about ism. I don't care about that. So you don't. So do you, but do you agree that when Donald Trump was sending those people to protest, it wasn't to go vote harder. They were trying to delay the uh, certification of the election. That was the goal. That was what Donald Trump wanted them to do. I, I just, he never said to do that. You're saying it like subliminally he wanted them to do that. I'm not he never saying said that. He said, March peacefully, make your voices heard, he said that and vote Mike, the Republicans we want out. That That's what he said. He, we, he said that Mike Pence was the sole guy that can save us. 
And he said, we need to go to the Capitol and make our voices heard, and we need to fight to take our democracy back. He didn't say, we need to go down and circumvent the electoral process to prevent the certificate. He didn't say that exactly, sure. Right. But like, well, he said, look, but, look, but like, clear, it's pretty obvious like what they're going down to well, protest Well, if it's so for, obvious, right? uh -huh. if it's so obvious, why didn't more than a handful of people actually attempt to do that, if that's actually what occurred, and not just like a spark of violence that you know, took off? I, I don't know. And I can't answer that. I don't know how, that, big, how big is the, I mean, what, like 2,000 some people went into the Capitol. I don't even know if there was enough room for everybody to participate. <laughs> like, like, I don't know if all the people in the back can all fit into the Capitol building. Like, how much space is in there? Okay, well, I, I, what I'm saying, like, the actual violence that occurred, we, so, then this goes back to my whole thing about it not being looked at honestly. And so, like, we can't even, like, talk about it honestly because, you know, the media talks about cherry picking the footage from that day, yet that's all they did. And they never showed the footage of the Capitol Police Hold removing on. barricades. We're not, even, we're not even at that part yet. I just want to no. establish okay. when Trump sent the people down to the Capitol, what do we think he's mm -hmm. sending them there for? Well, let's just look at the, uh, again, look at the number of people who were completely peaceful, and that suggests that everybody was on the same page to okay, me. Okay, except I mean, for the 2,000 people peaceful. that broke in. No, 2,000 people didn't break in. There was or at the people most, were illegally at the, trespassing inside the Capitol, I think. Right. So you could say illegally trespassing. I mean, when you're looking at trespassing laws, just so you know, like the, it is a thing like to be trespassed from a public space. You have to be first notified that you've been trespassed, then refuse to leave. And you're uh, it, it, they would have had to do that with each person. Like, I get that they're going to get they were trespassing and they're getting charged with that. They're getting the book thrown at them. I get that. But I'm just saying that the most of the people that got in were just walking in. They were either let in or walked in. There was, at the most, around 600 people, I, I'll give you, that were violent or breaking into windows and that sort of thing. So you got about 600 people out of more than 120,000. Okay. And, and to me, that doesn't... First of all, they weren't, and this goes back, we're going to have to go back to like the video and everything, but the people weren't initially being violent. There were things that happened we're not yet, that we're seemed not even to at spur that. it. Sure. Right, right, but you're talking about Trump got them to do it, and Trump sent them to do that, but that's not what they were doing. That Maybe not they all of them protesting. did do that, that's fine. I'm just trying to figure out, what do we think Trump sent them down there to do? Why do you think they I were think going to protest? What were they protesting? What they thought was a stolen, they believed the election was stolen. Thank you, yes. Just like, so they were there right, to protest, don't say just like Hillary Obama or Pivot. Um, they were down there to protest a stolen election, they thought that it was being stolen from them, so they were trying to delay right. the certification of the vote because they thought it was a stolen election. Uh, well, you're saying, you know, you're just implanting thoughts and motivations to thousands of people. I don't think that that's why they were going there. I, I think they were going there to protest and to pressure Republicans who were gonna certify the vote to not certify. That you just I said, think, thank you, I agree. Okay, so we agree that the protesters um, were there but to get the to Republicans to not certify the vote. Thank you. Okay. Sure, that's absolutely. Fine. So we're on the same page. I don't think that's an, uh, okay, yeah, and I mm -hmm. don't think that's an interaction. I don't even think it's against the law. I mean, I, again, okay. I've watched Democrats do that every election they've lost since 2000. So. Okay, uh, you haven't. Um, but so, uh, I okay. have. We're, so <laughs> they go down there to protest because they don't want Republicans to certify the vote, okay? So that's a big part, number one, of what Trump sent them down there to do, okay? He knew people in the crowd had weapons. He knew that he told them that the election was rigged and he wanted them to go down there and protest and fight like hell Wait. and take your country back. Yeah? Okay. Go ahead. The, the weapons thing. I mean, mm -hmm. there were a couple people that had handguns. Nobody used any. There was no uh, flagpoles were the, the most numerous weapon, I believe, if you want to call that a weapon. That's fine. I'm just saying Trump knew that people in his crowd had weapons, and he sent them to the Capitol to go and protest anyway. Uh, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, yeah, okay, so some people have uh, concealed carry and open carry permits. I don't see how that how that plays into this, but go ahead. I, I just... Uh, you're, you're saying that like, oh, he knows that some people are gonna have guns and that he expected them to go there and use them? I don't know if he knew they were gonna use them or not. He just knew he was sending his <laughs> protesters down there to f protest the certification. Don't you think this is like so much speculation though? What, and hold on, wait, 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 wait. What did I just say that was speculation? I didn't well, tell you he thought that. they were gonna use weapons. I said, here's what I just said, clearly, very, very clear. I said three things. I said, he told the people that the election had been stolen from them, that the machines had been rigged. He told the people to go back, fight to take your country back, pressure them to do the right thing. And he knew the people in the crowd that he was sending there had weapons. That's all I said. I didn't say he okay, knew they were well, gonna I, use them. I'm not speculating at all. That's not right, speculation. That no, that's just a fact. It's a fact of the matter. It makes you uncomfortable. I'm sorry, but that's just a fact of-, of It's like happened. saying he knows a couple of the people in the crowd might be a nut jobs. Like, 
okay, you could take any group of people anytime, anywhere, and you're going to have the exact same thing. Like, I, I don't know what that how that proves anything. I didn't say, I just said those three facts, okay? We can talk about other parts okay. of Okay, all right, okay. sure. So that was, <laughs> yeah, so that was one part of him um, sending people down, okay? The second part, what I think is one of the most important parts that makes this an attempted uh, coup or insurrection, doesn't even necessarily involve the crowd. It was President Trump trying to encourage Pence to unilaterally throw out the votes to unilaterally throw out the Electoral College votes, to throw it to the House of Representatives to get them to vote to make Trump the president. I think that was right, anti-democratic and, and that was an attempted coup. Sure, it was anti-democratic. I would not say it was an attempted coup because didn't the vice president at the time have the ability to do that? No. And was it, didn't they just recently or right after the election pass a law to keep to make sure they couldn't? I, again, I am not 100% they clarified on this one, some of the language, but no, the vice president absolutely did not have the power to unilaterally throw out the votes. Okay. Well, I mean, even if he, even if hold on, he, how much do you know about it, how much do you know about the Ray Epps stuff? A lot. Do you know? Do you know I'm who not, Mike just, Eastman is? Um, I think so, yes. Okay, how do you know so much about Ray Epps, but you haven't heard oh, about wait. the main legal guy that's feeding Trump the the bogus legal theory that he tried to use to get our election thrown out? Isn't that kind of a weird, like, I guess, area of focus? Like, would, wouldn't this, oh, I, I can understand you, here. hold on, I'm not doing anything. We can get into the Ray Epps stuff <laughs> next, we will. But I'm just saying, like, it's kind no, of strange I... to me that, like, we're not even aware at all of what Trump tried to do to get the election literally thrown out, but we're so aware no, of, like, all these other things. things. That, Oh, okay. Well, then you would have known that Pence does not have the ability, the vice president does not have the ability to unilaterally throw out an election. That is not something given to the vice president. Okay, well, and he didn't, right? And even if he would have tried, there would have been challenges that would have played out in court, correct? Possibly, yeah. But do you agree that if Trump asked him that that would be an attempted coup or insurrection? I, I don't know if that's an attempted coup. I would say maybe if I, the I think president Trump of the United States. Let me just clearly say this. Let me clearly say this, and you can explain. Yeah, if the president mm -hmm. of the United States told the vice president, "Hey, can you throw out the people's vote for who should be president and make me president?" You don't think that's an attempted coup? What would you call that? Well, first of all, I don't. I have to. I have to look at it. I, <laughs> I know I'm. Uh, that's hypocritical, having criticized you for the exact same thing, uh, but. Um, I think that throwing anything against the wall to try and 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 keep the election in his favor, which is what he's trying to do, uh, is different from actually carry, try, attempting to carry out a coup. I mean, he didn't actually he what you're saying is he asked Pence, can you do this? Yes. OK. And not Pence just that. Said, also, no, then, he, then he said it in his speech when he sent the Capitol people uh, to go riot at the uh, White House. And then he tweeted it in the middle of the invasion of the Capitol building that Pence needs to do what's right or whatever. And then people in the crowd were screaming, hang Pence, hang Pence or whatever. And they had the little gallows, mm -hmm. whatever bullshit. Yeah. All of that happened. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. If he, so if that's not an attempted coup or insurrection or whatever, what would you call that? Well, I would definitely call it an escalation uh, in, t compared to what Democrats had done up to that point. I would say that. Democrats. I'm asking you, what you, would you call it if the president of the United States is telling the vice president, throw out I the think vote it, and I make think it me was leader? Undemocratic, and yeah. Okay, and undemocratic. I, I think it was undemocratic. Okay. What do we call undemocratic attempts to, f to entrench your power as leader of a country against the democratic will of the people in a democratic system? W would this not just be a okay. coup? Is not a coup? All right. So... All right, so this this brings us back to my original thing of we have to have a agreed upon set of standards here, and okay, I would agree. Fine, we'll say that's a coup. But okay. then the same point, based on those standards that we're now agreeing it's a coup. Okay. I would say what what the FBI and what Hillary Clinton did in 2016 was an attempted coup. What part of okay? I'll entertain this for a second. Okay, what part of what Hillary? Which one do you want to focus on first? Hillary, the FBI. Well, it was it was a scheme carried out by both. Okay, I would say they were cohorts. What? So, what part of this was an attempted coup? How, what made it a coup? Well, so we know that Peter Strzok, you know, in his text was talking about, you know, don't worry about if Trump gets elected, we have an insurance policy, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then Peter Strzok just magically, like, and so we also know from the um, from the uh, IG report that came out uh, about this that. The FBI knew that the Hillary Clinton campaign was kind of was trying to hatch this Russian collusion scheme uh -huh. to, to to use against Trump. And knowing that they still went along with it when when she disseminated it out to the media or I'm sorry, she gave it to the FBI. FBI leaked it to the media. Comey did. Remember? And so that began that whole thing. Um, 
Peter Strzok then, who was the lead investigator against Hillary and got her off the hook, is now suddenly the lead investigator against Donald Trump. Okay, and so the entire point of that was clearly to, one, uh, delegitimize the election and and overturn it. What? What? How else would? What else was there? Were they trying to do there? Do you think it's possible uh, that they thought? Legitimate? You don't think that that was a coup? That they were lying? Do they you think li- they did all of that? Do you think it's they, poss- they spied? Do you think it's possible that they legitimately thought that collusion could have been possible, or do you think that's totally outlandish? I. I, the FBI knew, we know that they knew that the information within the dossier that Hillary had was was uncorroborated and came from Russian uh, disinformation sources. They knew that. Okay, that's not what I asked. What I asked was, do you think it's possible that people that worked at the FBI or that were in Hillary's campaign at the time thought that that was a possibility, that there was collusion? Um, no, no, not, no. I'm, okay, there was no I, I, way with no. people like Manafort getting prison for huge stuff, colluding and doing weird shit in, in uh, Ukraine and the, the fucking ledger. Like, with any of these other people around him, there was no chance that Trump himself, with Trump making the statement on TV, if Russia finds these emails, it'll be your There's no chance that anybody thought they're like, damn, maybe this guy does have some shady connections. That weird meeting that happened at the Trump building with like the four or five people, like, none of that. Well, this is like, it's a plausible deniability kind of a situation. Like, I, it, all I know is that this it turned out to be BS and it was we, we there's all kinds of funny business around the, the introduction of it in the first place. Uh-huh. And to me, that was an att- I thought it was an attempt to coup when it was going on like it. it <clears throat> so, yeah, I, we just we we don't have this agreed upon standard of coup. And if we're going to say that what Trump did was a coup, then I think that was a coup. And it, it just well, always so happens. The, so the difference thing that I would argue for the Trump coup is that one, it came from the president of the United States, which I think is really significant. And two, he knew that all of this was bullshit the entire time. And well, three, we don't know that. I, we, nobody knows that. We pretty much know that. And we're definitely going to find out as the uh, federal uh, case against him uh, begins to go. Uh, what are they going to, are they going to read his mind? How do you think any criminal investigation and conviction ever works? You understand that for every criminal conviction, there is a mens rea, a state of mind necessary to commit a crime, right? You do know that, right? Right, right. Okay. Right. So when you say, how do you ascertain somebody's state of mind? We do this every single day in the United States criminal court system. So I don't know why you think it's exceptional here, right? There's plenty of ways that we can try to ascertain somebody's state of mind prior to them committing an act, right? Right, but... Okay. I, and didn't you just I, confidently tell me that you know 100% the state of mind of Strzok and Hillary Clinton, that they absolutely knew that they were lying the entire time? So you know that 100%, but you can't even guess Trump's state of mind? Isn't that kind of weird? Right, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're, we're uh, there. It's double standards, and we can't uh, even agree on what the standards are. I, I don't think I'm having any trouble agreeing on what the standards are. Well, no, you have your standard, right? And you don't really care... Like you don't care if Democrats set us, set these standards in the first place and aren't being held to. Like for instance, let me just give you an example. So those riots that occurred all those years, though most all of those, I mean, except for you could argue the George Floyd ones, were based on lies. They they the Democrats and media literally spread lies, got these riots to erupt, incited them, caused death and destruction. To me, they did it because they were mad about losing the election. But nobody ever paid a price for that. Not nobody was ever charged with anything with inciting riots. Did anybody get charged with inciting a riot on the J6 stuff? Well, isn't that, uh, I mean, isn't that what this is about, that Donald Trump incited the riot? I thought Donald Trump's charges on the Jack Smith case were like obstruction and stuff. I don't think any of it has to do with incitement. Isn't, well, um, these, um, these uh, getting him removed from the ballot in Maine and Colorado, they're basically saying that he's guilty of insurrection, right? Correct. But we don't okay. have like a criminal, but that's like a... Uh, 14th Amendment thing. There's like a different thing for right. that. Right. Well, I know. Um, but the insurrection <laughs> here doesn't necessarily... <laughs> what? No, that's just very convenient to me that your political opponents can basically accuse you of something without being charged or convicted, and thus it is. And so his political opponents can now remove him from the ballot. Well, I mean, that's Again, probably... Again, a standard... I don't, I don't think the standard would be entertained for a second if it were Trump and Republicans trying it. I mean, I don't know why you would think that when what we're talking about here is an amendment that was literally passed after the Civil War to prevent people from taking office if they'd broken an oath, which I think is pretty reasonable. Um, Whereas the uh, Eastman legal theory that Donald Trump was using to unilaterally throw out the election, I don't know if they were if they was willing to pursue that. I don't know why you think Trump wouldn't also pursue this. Like, that doesn't make any sense. The Trump pursuit of Vice President Pence to throw out the election is way more radical than this interpretation of the 14th Amendment. Yeah, I mean... 
So I think Trump would absolutely I, again, pursue that if he thought he could. Like, wasn't Trump, wasn't Trump literally chanting, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up, like telling the FBI to lock up Hillary Clinton? Like, Yeah, but it wasn't Donald Trump's DOJ doing it. I mean, it's a little different, I think. Sure, I'm just saying that, like, well, but it was Donald Trump's FBI and DOJ and the uh, special prosecutor, Mueller. Donald everything. Trump's FBI? Uh, when he was in oh, office, was right? Wasn't there, weren't a lot of these investigations happening and shit while he was in office? Uh, the Hillary Clinton one was Barack Obama's DOJ, wasn't it? No, no, I'm at, for the Russia collusion stuff. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, Trump definitely wasn't very good at appointing people because, I mean, there's all kinds of questionable crap that Ray has done and said, so... I mean, the fact that he's a Republican doesn't really mean anything to me. Of course. Um, okay. Well, what does it matter? I mean, so. Well, nothing matters. You guys say rhino to everybody that, like, every single person well, around Trump, all of his cabinet, all of his advisors, everybody in the White House, Mark Meadows, all of the people in his election campaign, every lawyer team. Now, apparently, all of them are snakes. Isn't that kind of. Don't you think at some point, like, instead of saying every single person around Trump is conspiracy driven and all these. Isn't it easier to say that Trump is like an incompetent loser trying to hold on to power in the United States? Like, is he's definitely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would say I would agree with the incompetence thing 100%. And want to I mean, be he, dictator? Like, doesn't that explain every single action that he's trying to I mean, hold I, out of power at all costs, even though he knows say, it's bullshit? Well, well, they all do that. I mean, the Democrats, have, every election they've lost, they've tried to hold on at all costs. Okay, why, why did Hillary Clinton concede then? Why didn't she say, I'm not conceding until the Russia collusion probe finishes? Why didn't Gore throw out the votes uh, from Florida over the hanging Chad stuff right. in 2000? Well, that's why that's why I said that Trump escalated it. But it was also the first time Republicans have denied election results. But it was an escalation for sure. An escalation of? Of election denial. I, like, I, I don't I know look if at like, the, subverting the actual process is an escalation of just people in the media, you know, sulking about like, oh, Russia helped him. Well, no, I'm him, not blah, even blah, talking blah. about that. No, Democrats actively tried to get uh, Ohio, or, I'm sorry, Florida votes decertified in 2000. They tried to get Ohio decertified in 2005. And in 2016, I believe they tried to get uh, something decertified. I have to look that sure. one up they, again. They tried in Florida and it went through the courts and then they gave up. Right. Trump, Trump, Trump is not going Trump, to. The, Trump just suggested things like it didn't even get to the court process. Well, so, it, he lost well, it. I on agree. Hold on. When you say Trump just suggested things, he was trying to suggest to his vice president to make him the president subverting the vote that he lost, that right. he knew he lost. That's not just suggesting yeah. things. That's an attempted coup. Well, no, it, it, there was no attempt, though. I mean, there was an attempt. It was when he asked Pence, can you please help it, me? Coup did it the go government? past? Did it go past the question? What do you mean, did it go? Wait, so, okay, so question. Is it only a coup if it works? And then if it's not, what do you call it? Well, no, there was not an attempt. It was a question asked. It wasn't a question. He was, like, telling him to, like, uh, like you could do this to throw out the vote to keep me as president. Why do you think he was right, tweeting out, like, Pence needs to do the right thing, which was throw right. out no, the I vote and make that. me president? Right, right. And Trent Pence is like, no, I can't do that. And so it went nowhere, You're right? Yeah, so. because it would be cooing the government. But Trump attempted right, to get him to like coup when you the talk government. about Russian right. But when you talk about like the Russian collusion thing, that was actually in action, actually taking place. So it went way beyond a hypothetical question. It, but the the process for that is, it's way easier to give you fifty other scenarios or even just one where people legitimately thought Russia collusion existed. That was probably that's way more people believable. Legitimately thought. Okay. That's way more believable than Trump thinking that like election machines and ballot boxes and all these other crazy things they were saying were rigged and that vice and see, that Pence could Pence could make him the dictator. See, when you say that though, when you're like when when he says it's cra it's a crazy thing when Trump says that the voting machines were hacked or rigged, when I just told you that Democrats spent months repeating that over and over and over and over again for months, saying that exact same thing about the 2016 election. Have you seen that video? Are you aware of that? There's a mashup of like 10 minutes of it. Uh, you can throw it to me if you want. But yeah, again, like the like Barr went through the Dominion machines. I believe the DOJ uh, authored by Barr literally made a statement saying, hey, we investigated these machines. They're fine. That's his own DOJ. That's his own attorney general. And that's his own intelligence analyzing these machines. He had no reason to believe any of these machines were rigged. Everybody in his campaign was telling him the exact same thing. Right. 
Yeah, and I've heard that every single person was telling the same thing. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but if like if I'm Donald Trump, right, and I'm aware the Democrats during my when I was elected spent all this time saying the election was stolen and the voting machines were hacked and all this, why would he not think that he could then do the exact same thing in response? Because the Democrats didn't try to subvert the election process. But I, like Donald Trump was did. saying I mean, mail-in that, voting was rigged before like years before we even had mail-in voting. Like Hillary Clinton literally just like last year said that the 2024 election was going to be stolen by Donald Trump and Republicans. How? She just is, I don't know she she What did she say? I what was, she was her talking statement? about? Was she talking about this because this would be stealing the election? Yes, telling the vice president to unilaterally she said, like She said votes? Donald Trump and Republicans. She said Donald Trump and Republicans literally have a plan to steal the next election. Okay, here, I got this, uh, here, I got uh, this link for you here real quick. This one's 20 minutes long. It's, it's even longer, but, uh, uh again, my, uh, my point is you were talking about state of mind, right? And I'm trying to explain what Trump's state of mind and uh, probably a lot of ours at the time was, and we, you got to under, understand that we've sitting here and witnessed all these things happen up to this point and with nothing, no kind of real backlash. And then suddenly it's this so big Hillary Clinton is here's her statement because I'm looking for the source of this. I'm curious. Hillary Clinton has claimed Republicans already have a plan to steal the 2024 election, the latest in a series of wild charges by the former first lady, senator from New York, and secretary of state. She says, "Quote: Right wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election, and they're not making a secret of it." Uh, the right wing controlled Supreme Court may be poised to rule on giving state legislatures the power to overturn presidential elections. She adds, she adds, referring to a case for the high court involving the invalidation of North Carolina's congressional map by a state court. But in, we got to take uh, I don't know. I can send you another clip of Hillary. Literally, you got to take it in the context that Hillary Clinton has going back to, to the year 2000 or I'm sorry, 2001. Consistently. Even when I look at even when I look at like the more quotes in the article, he knows he's an illegitimate president. I know you guys bring this one up a lot. I believe he understands that the many varying tactics they used from voter suppression and voter purging um, to hacking to the false stories. He knows that there were just a bunch of different reasons why the election turned out like it did. Now, I might not like her use of illegitimate president here. I think it's a dumb term, but clearly she's talking about something different than saying like voter boxes or ballot boxes. She said hacking. Yeah, her campaign she said hacking. Was, you yes, literally just read it. Her campaign was hacked. Do you remember the election? <laughs> right. Her, <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you remember what was hacked, by the way? I always ask people this. Wasn't it like all the letter? Podesta emails and all that bullshit that came out of the DNC well, yeah, and everything? It, Right. It, it basically it showed that the media and, and the Hillary campaign were coordinating. That's great. And, and Pivot. But what she said was true then. Her <laughs> campaign was hacked. So I don't know why you're. Yeah. So, so what she was saying was true. You just proved that it was true. So she's making true statements. Is this at all comparable to Donald Trump saying ballot boxes were stuffed? We just found 200,000 dead voters in Pennsylvania or all. Of, do you think these are comparable statements? I, I think they are. Yeah, I think they are comparable. Absolutely. And Hillary Clinton. Uh, she wait, wait. Went so on to a, be clear, Hillary Clinton's statement is true. The Republican statements are waiting for more info. How do you think these are comparable statements? They they are literally the saying the exact same things. When Hillary, You're just saying that when Hillary did it, it's legitimate. And when her opponents do it, it's not. Well, because there's an underlying fact of the matter. Hillary Clinton's campaign was hacked. Donald Trump's campaign has not produced any evidence that votes were okay. rigged. Correct? When, not correct? When you say the hacked... Right, but they the Democrats still said that the voting machines were hacked at the time. Is what I'm saying. That was that was an overall narrative at the time. So when oh when the that might be a different there, narrative. Okay, that might be a different thing that's been said. So that's not part of Hillary Clinton. I'd be curious when you're saying they were hacked. I mean, the voting machines her were party, hacked. her supporters. They, she's echoing the things they're saying. I mean, it just it's interesting to me how you guys like want to you you want to get in there and parse everything uh, when it's. Uh, your your side or whatever i'm willing to give up uh concede some things here but like to you're not clear, at all hold on like, you haven't conceded even the most basic points number I one did. i did i did and number i conceded that trump is ignorant i conceded no, that trump, conceded trump, that trump, trump is anti-democratic no anti-democratic and ignorant are weak uh claims the reality is is that he attempted to coup the government and that's like plainly obvious okay yeah i I, I cannot agree on that based on the standard that we've already set so then what do you, you think know, is I, what do you think is a coup you define a coup <laughs> Right. It's it's a it's a you're you're usurping you're you're supering uh usurping the election and the government and you're taking power against the wishes of the country of the democratic vote. But So how is what he like, asked Pence to do that, not an attempted coup? Right, but you just said it again. He asked 
pence to do it that's why it's an attempt okay but what what democrats the fbi and hillary clinton did was an actual attempt that actually went forward i don't think investigating somebody for something is the same as saying we need to throw out the election results but that was the whole point the whole point was to say that trump was a russian agent he stole the election with russia's help and he's not legitimate let's let's say that i grant you all of that if that was the whole point then why did it fail well, if all of this is controlled well, by the deep state, if all though? the evidence is faked, if all of the evidence is made up and all these people are biased and all this horrible shit happens, why did we get things like the Durham report? Why were Republicans in the House able to like uh, review and investigate and, and allege and show pretty truthfully that the FBI had issues relating to political bias? There was a guy that was literally convicted for faking information on a FISA warrant. Why did all of this happen if it's all controlled by the deep state and all of it is illegitimate well, and all of it is highly biased and all of it was an attempted coup? How did it fail? Well, look at it like a drive by. OK, they they sped by. They did their damage and then they were gone so i mean they did their damage trump it, was president I, for the, his whole term what was sure, the damage done sure. that was a he did get in sure okay yeah he, he he did but uh you won't i mean you're not going to admit that they were trying and everything they could possibly do to get rid of the guy i think that's possible they here, were doing this investigation but I, my question was don't you think it's possible they thought I, there was some like actual collusion here is that not possible hold on real quick uh yeah. Yeah, okay well i'll answer that but one second um do you remember literally from the the day before he took office they started talking impeachment and the narrative that the walls were closing in and soon we are going to be rid of donald trump was like it, that drum beat was pumped out daily for years uh, okay so that was clearly their intention was to get him out of the office. That, I, mean, I mean, if they, they really openly. thought that he did Russia collusion, yeah, sure. Okay, well, we really think the election was stolen. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not I saying know, I do. I'm saying I understand I'm, that I'm people think that, right. but there's a difference on the strength of those claims, <laughs> right? Okay. Well, the, the stolen well, election narrative was tried and failed in every single court where it was brought up. There is no reason that Donald Trump should have thought the election was stolen. Nobody near him was saying that. Nobody near him was agreeing with him on that. He knew that he well, lost the election. Yeah, I, I will say this, that I, while I don't necessarily agree with the stolen uh, narrative, I definitely agree with the rigged narrative. I, I definitely think the election in a lot of ways was rigged. And I would say most of all would be the fact that Joe Biden and um, uh, the other guy, I can't think of his name, they hatched that plan. They emailed all these intelligence experts, said, we need you guys to come in and defend us and back us up on these stories coming out about Hunter. They did. They lied. It was used as justification to suppress real news that was damaging to Biden. And, you know, I don't know if that helped to sway the election in his favor. Maybe it did. But that's a pretty big interference in the election, in my wasn't opinion. Wasn't that story, like, uh, wasn't that story suppressed for literally 24 hours before they allowed it back on Twitter? Um, I'm not sure how long it was. Uh, I remember Pretty, the New York wasn't Post. Wasn't it like one day? But no, it was actually several days that that narrative and that narrative continued despite the story being allowed back on social media. The narrative that it was Russian disinfo continued. Which, through what the do election. you think was more damaging to the electoral chances? Do you think it was that New York Post thing getting censored for one? I say censored. Getting um, the Twitter decided to delist it, it was for censored. one day. Um, well, there's no proof that anybody in the White House ever made a request to censor that particular story. Um, no, so no, 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 no. They did 100 percent coordinate the intelligence experts. Uh, no, they didn't. Um, Joe Biden literally started. Joe Biden and um, fuck, let me let me find this real quick. I literally have talked to the people that did these Twitter files. That's all bullshit. None of this is true. None of what you're saying is true. You're not going to find a substantiated anywhere. You're going to find conjecture um, where people guess, but no, there's no proof of any of this. No, we have the email. We have the actual emails uh, that went out to these intelligence experts about this. That, there were real. emails get, went out go. saying to like be on the lookout for some attempted like disinformation campaigns. Sure. But Joe Biden wasn't even in the White House at the time that this happened. So it would, it would be impossible. Right, he for, was running. Sure. He was running. Yes, but this was Trump's White House. This was Trump's intelligence agency. This was Trump's FBI. This was Trump's DOJ. Well, this these weren't. In, no, these were former intel agents. Former intel agents were sending emails Blix. to it look was, out. I thought, wasn't this our current right. intelligence was saying that so, there could be Russian disinformation no, on the way? No, no, it was it was literally Joe Biden and uh Oh, I got to find this. They they basically sent out an email saying, hey, we need you guys to back us up uh, and, and come out and basically say this is Russian disinfo. We have reason to believe it is. They all agreed. And we got the we got the story. Let me uh, here. I'm, I'm trying to find it right now.
What do you think did more damage to the campaigns? This story being censored for one day on Twitter or Comey making his public announcements about Hillary Clinton's like investigation being closed and opened and the, the statements well, that he made about her conduct? Well, what did he, well, and you're Can you answer that said, question said, before you ask a question? Before you, I know um, a lot of people always do this. You're never answering that question. Okay. What do you think was more damaging? The New York Post story about Hunter Biden being censored for one day or Comey's public, all of his public announcements about Hillary Clinton's investigation? Well, the investigation announcements may have been more damaging. May have been. But I would say, so here, let me, so they, maybe they were, I, I don't, you know, we don't really have any way of knowing this, right? So it's all speculation. But I would say that Comey's announcement um, was actually, you know, it was, uh, it was a softball announcement because remember what he said, he said that no reasonable prosecutor would go after this case. And we know now because that's because the head, uh, lead investigator changed the wording of the charges so she could avoid it. That was a, uh, he so, gave a scathing review of their investigation for Hillary He said Clinton. that she was very, right. He said that she was very, um, uh, what he, I, I can't remember everything, but he basically just said that she shouldn't have done it and it was very bad and smack her hand bad but she didn't she never got charged she didn't get charged but ordinarily we wouldn't have heard any of the details in that investigation it was just because comey made them public that we did right but the fact that he said no reasonable prosecutor would go after her, i mean that to me that he was saving her I that's mean, great that you but, feel that way i don't know if you're 19 no, on, or you're just on. a child i don't know but for everybody that was I'm alive, explaining the difference no no hold, hold on. on for I'm everybody that was difference. alive at the time comey's declaration of what hillary had done was scathing maybe he didn't recommend charges at the end but Everybody thought that she fucked up huge when he made that announcement at the end. I don't know why you're trying to gloss over that. Like, oh, well, he said they didn't recommend charges, so everybody thought, well, oh, I'm not glossing. School. They glossed over. They, they didn't gloss over by definition. Charges. No. He went over all, he went over that, what did he say? Like, Hillary Clinton State Department of these engaged in egregiously horrible behaviors that were severely reckless and blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. He, like, right. He read, he, he literally was reading the edited wording by the lead investigator who was investigating her. That's fine, but ordinarily which, we wouldn't have heard any of that. Comey made the decision to go public with it. I think that was way more damaging to Hillary's campaign than the New York Post story about Hunter Biden's cock being censored for one day. Well, well, that's your deflection is the cock thing. But obviously there was more damaging information on there, especially like when it relates to the big guy and all that stuff. But let me just say that the thing with Hillary, that's legitimately something she did. And quite frankly, people deserved to know about that. That's, and well, hold on. Uh, First of all, hold on. And then the Hunter story, they're literally trying to cover it up. So, I mean, they're completely different motivations there. In one, in one instance, they're trying to give the American public more information, and in the other, they're literally trying to suppress information because it's damaging to the guy they want to win. Okay, so firstly, when you say they, we're talking about different parties here. So number one, uh, for deserve to know about Hillary Clinton, that's not true. Policy at the FBI is you don't usually comment on ongoing investigations or any investigation. There's no reason why anybody needed to know the results of an investigation ever. That's not generally what intelligence agencies do ever. So number one, so the idea that people deserve to know, that's your opinion, but that stands in contrast to how these agencies normally operate. Number one, number two, for the Hunter Biden thing, um, that wasn't the government. That was Twitter that made a decision to censor that for one day, and then they rolled back on it. And I'm pretty sure we've talked more about Hunter Biden as a result of Twitter's choice there. I'm pretty sure they amplified that more than it ever would have been otherwise. Right. Um, you know, Biden put a lot of layers in between him. Uh, these 51 intelligence experts were meant to bolster the case being made to Twitter, uh, suggesting to them from the FBI who were suggesting to them that information that was Russian disinfo was going to be dropping. So, yeah, you can, again, they left room for plausible deniability here. But we both know what they were trying to do. Like, how can you not be honest about that? They both what? I'm saying we know what they were trying to do. I'm saying that they, yes, they left enough room there and I left uh, for possible deniability, but do you think it's Joe possible? Biden, do you think it's possible that Twitter censored it because they were worried that it was a disinformation campaign? Do you think that's possible? Right, but why were they, why would, did they think that? Did it have anything to do with the fake uh, intelligence experts? Letter. Do you think it might be that the story on its face actually sounds unbelievably incredible? That a blind laptop repair guy ended up taking a laptop from Hunter Biden that Giuliani got his hands on and then mailed it? You don't think that story sounds incredible? You don't think it's incredible? Can you answer that, that question before you pivot to another thing? Um, maybe slightly, but not any less incredible than, the, than Tr Donald Trump is a Russian agent who stole the election. Okay. Um... You think that the you think that the credibility that Trump might be communicating with people in Russia, okay, 
that to, to help him win an election, you think that that's less credible than the on its face story of the blind guy with the laptop that got picked up and Giuliani found out about it. You think that that story is like, oh, that's pretty believable right off the, yeah, I would believe that immediately. No, I'm saying they're both, they're both kind of fantastic, uh, almost unbelievable stories, yeah. Okay, let's say that they're both fantastic, unbelievable stories. For Twitter, I'm asking specifically for Twitter, could it be that Twitter censored mm-hmm. it because initially they were worried that it was a disinformation thing? Uh, I mean, so I'll give you that, that is a possibility. Okay. Although, excuse me, I just burped into the mic, sorry. Um, but at the same time, what do we, we do know a lot of things about these groups uh, that they were using to, um, to filter, like filter this information and figure out what uh, was what what should be banned, and these groups are, I, and I can't remember the name of it. They were using the the dashboard. I, I, can you remember what that was called uh, that Twitter was using? I can't remember off the top of my head, but something for the, the analytics the, or whatever. It, no, it wasn't that one. It was like uh, I, I'll look it up here in a second. But that group that they were using is like clearly partisan. It's like made up of like Democrat and Clinton people, and so you know you can't really i don't know the, the whole twitter thing you, i actually will give twitter some credit because uh the the one guy noah roth or whatever he pushed back against a lot of the stuff that the that the government was saying to him um so there was that but the thing the thing with the twitter you keep saying it's one day that they suppress it okay but that's kind of unprecedented for one it's it, you know it kind of to be clear that's not me. unprecedented twitter was banning twitter was going through a whole ho if you actually read any of the twitter files twitter was going through a whole oh, host of internal deliberation of stories right. that they I should know. censor or that's stories what i just that they said shouldn't. yeah well so when you say unprecedented i mean like they had been involved in doing this type of stuff like over and over no, again I'm- no, no, I mean, just uh, like suppress it. Like they remember, remember they actually banned New York Post and they suppressed that story. And it's right before an election. To me, that's that's kind of crazy, especially when we find out that it, it literally started at the Joe Biden campaign. I don't so, wait, wait, started at the Joe Biden campaign. Yeah, that's where that entire uh, 51 intelligence experts thing came from. Hold on. Here, I, when I that story that. was posted on the New York Post, OK, their decision, right. you can read, you can see all the emails that they have where they deliberate on banning that or not. None of them mention no, Joe no, Biden's I'm, campaign. No, no, I'm not talking about. No, no. So that's separate. I'm saying that the 51 intelligence experts uh, claim that these intelligence experts were saying that this story was Russian disinfo, which got widely put out there and that was the justification for suppressing that story that's that's what led to that so maybe it was only a day maybe i don't even know i don't think that they cited that in the emails ever the 51 intelligence people means we need to suppress this story there was a big debate within twitter in emails you can read it where they're trying to figure out if they should do it or not eventually they end up censoring under the hack materials policy and then the next day i think they roll that back because they think that it's not for them to censor basically or whatever and they change their policy on that Right, and that's that would be one thing. Okay, so that is one thing. But then, even after uh, it, it was allowed, they, the media still spent the rest of the election saying that all that stuff was Russian disinfo. So I don't. know. That's just another example to uh, me. We're not of talking the about. You can are, say, hold on. We're just looking at the specific actions that Twitter took. I'm just trying to say, like, I'm right. just trying to see if we can at all, like, if we are capable whatsoever of imagining other people's states of mind. That story on its face looked insane. Any fair person that's not so lost in political bias would obviously admit that that story seems insane, on its face. It turned out to be true, though, right? It did. Sometimes life is stranger than fiction, right? It happens. But on its face, that story looks insane. Also, we can be sympathetic towards social media companies at the time, especially in the wake of all that Cambridge Analytica shit, that they were incredibly fucking afraid of their social media platform uh, being indicted in some like huge disinformation campaign. And now they've got to send their people in front of Congress again to explain why they led, you know, foreign actors propagate all this shit. Because remember, remember what else happened with the Mueller investigation? There were a ton of indictments that came out about Russians that were using fake Twitter yes. accounts to spread misinformation. Do you acknowledge? Did that happen? Right. I, I do acknowledge. Okay. I, uh, let me. Can I just add something to it, though? Sure. One, none of those people were ever brought in, in front of a court or convicted. And two. Wait, why were they never brought in front of a court or convicted? Well, they never they never were extradited or came out of Russia, obviously. Wait, but, so wait. So why um, bring that? Yeah, hold on. Do you think Russia is going to extradite on, hold on. people for election interference? No. Why are you bring this up like it's a point at all for anything relating to what you're saying? Well, well, it's not much of a point, but the, se- the second thing I'm going to say is, is that we now know that those Twitter, the Twitter and Facebook campaigns had no effect no measurable effect i don't know if we know that at all but um yeah absolutely i'll get you those links too one second uh, 
I don't know how we could, that's an incredibly difficult thing to study. I agree, I agree, which is what I was saying when they first, when that whole thing first started after the election, and they're like, oh, well, all these uh, Pokemon Go ads and Twitter ads, uh, Russia influenced the election. It's like, to what extent? How many votes did they change? For all we know, none. And it turns out that that is likely the case, but I will show you those links, one second. Uh, uh, here we go, so we have this. And there is no evidence that Russian Twitter bots had any meaningful effect pushing voters to Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election. Uh, I can I can agree that there's probably no evidence of it. I don't. But like that, just goes to what I said before. I don't know how you would even measure something like this, right? Right. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean. Right, and I, there really is no way to measure it, or uh, so it shouldn't even really be brought up. But I, and I, well, if hold you read on, that, wait, there wait, is some things. But would you say that there was a measurable impact that censoring that New York Time or New York Post story for one day had to help the Democrats? The only proof I would have of that, and and actually now that I've read, I think there was some poll supposedly that showed that maybe people or people would have changed their votes had they known that was a legitimate story. But I've also seen some stories that say that poll's not real. So that I'm not 100% sure of. If that were true, I would say that there is at least some chance that, yes, it could have it could have been an October surprise, right? Um, I mean, it was, right? They, that's why they held on to that story for months until the election. Well, and then they tried to I know, but it. the media, right, but the media circled the wagons, did everything they could to discredit that story. Uh, sure. I mean, they people tried to investigate it, but I mean, also like, I mean, Giuliani wasn't Giuliani not giving out like any part of this to anybody else? Wasn't Giuliani yeah. holding on to the copies himself so nobody could verify or vet or get any yeah, information I know. about? Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, I still am like, why did they give it to Giuliani of all people? But yeah. Well, so even it sounds like even you have weird questions about it. It was kind of strange, right? Well, yeah, it was, I, I do you think asked, that when I've been you look at that question forever. OK, yeah. well, then when you look at people like Trump and you see you surrounded by people like Giuliani and weird shit like that happens, when you see like Trump had Manafort as part of his campaign, you don't think there's some chance that maybe people in the FBI or people in the government are like, damn, this guy seems shady as fuck. Donald Trump. Look at the people he's surrounded with. Look at the weird shit happening around him. Like, you don't think that some people might have thought they're like, oh, you know, maybe he does like or at least people in his campaign are working with people in Russia. I get, yeah, I mean, sure, but I just, I, I can't forget that the people making this accusation are the same people using actual, res literally spreading Russian disinformation in order to make the case. Um, but I, I mean, I get what you're saying. Right. I get what you're saying, but we, but we do know, but we do at least know from that IG report that the FBI knew that the allegations in that dossier were crap. And they knew that the, the, that the allegations that Hillary had already planned to make those allegations after the election, if she lost, and they still went along with it anyway. They still well, they investigated know, it, but they knew that it was like weak info, right? Sure, right, yeah. Okay, but it took it was like pulling teeth to get that information out for years to, to get to because the media was not you know forthright about that. Pulling at teeth all. to get information out about what? To get out that to people to the public that this dossier and a lot of this information was based on actual Russian disinformation that had been acquired from a Russian Why? spy. The, because the FBI is not going to make a statement on an ongoing investigation. Why would they do how that? How convenient. Yes, yes, how convenient. As opposed to what? They should <laughs> just, be leaking information about their ongoing <sighs> investigation? What I do just, you mean, how convenient? That's the policy of the FBI, and it always has been. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, how convenient? Well... I don't know. I, we just hear that a lot, you know, from Ray and and especially in FBI uh, agents who have been in hearings as it pertains to January 6th and stuff like that. I just I hear that so often now. It just seems like an excuse to get out of answering a question. Do you I mean, think I understand that, do you, what you're wait, saying. Wait, do you think that it's true that the FBI doesn't comment on ongoing investigations? Do you think that's a good policy or do you think it's a bad policy? I think I can see the the need for, it, but I can can you also not see how it could be used to not give up information that could be damaging to the FBI? Sure. Then you do closed hearings, or you do internal audits mm -hmm. or investigations, or you have an inspector general or a special counsel, or there's like a million different ways you can. That we have investigated these things, mm -hmm. but like I mean, aren't we like like if we believe like in law and order, and if we think that you know processes are important for investigating crimes like it's pretty standard that the cia the nsa the fbi aren't going to comment on like ongoing matters that's just like department policy norms 
Mm, well, I'm just saying that worked out very conveniently well for what I'm saying is possibly a coup attempt. You know, they, all these parties, all these institutional powers playing along in the scheme to unseat Trump after he legitimately won. I think that when we talk about coup attempt, I think the intention is important. And I think that it's very believable that people thought that Trump was some, especially with people like Manafort working so closely with him. I think it's possible that people could look at Trump and go like, you know, this motherfucker might be it. And they investigate the fuck out of it. Um, but when I look at- Didn't Trump fire Manafort like immediately as soon as that came out? I think Trump was, I think in a lot of ways, like I said, he was very dumb about who he put around him. And I think people that he put around him could see his naivete and used him and I think that a lot of people did not want him in power. Okay, do you um, understand that what you're saying right there, that is like the main thrust of the Russia collusion conspiracy, that Donald Trump is dumb and that if Putin or some unregistered Russian agent showed up to offer him information, he would take it? Right, but I mean, did, did anything like that ever, I mean, there was never any proof anything like that ever happened. I don't Outside of the, Correct. the But I'm just saying that what thing. you just, you seem to acknowledge, like you just said, even retrospectively knowing how it ended up, you just gave a totally fair state of mind for anybody in the FBI to think that like, yeah, fuck, Trump could be compromised because of this. Also, yeah, Trump literally pardoned Manafort. I think Trump pardoned everybody that was part of his campaign that ended up getting charged or convicted of crimes. And Manafort, Manafort was working as an unregistered foreign agent for like shuttling like tens of millions of dollars to like fucking Yanukovych, right? Who's like Putin's right. <laughs> like, so I mean, like, it's kind of weird that I, I think that somebody could look at something like and go like, yeah, Trump is a little bit shady. I just think for state of mind, possibly. I'll also okay, say so it could I be mean, that like people are like, I'll I know this is that. bullshit. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll concede, I'll concede uh, the state of mind thing, but I'm, I'm just saying that. You know what we what we watched was if if what the FBI was was doing was completely legitimate. Even though I, you know, we know they lied to get FISA warrants. We know that they knew that th this narrative was created by his political opponents, right? And that it wasn't didn't really have any legitimacy to it. Yet they went along with it anyway. You know, and everything you know with Peter Strzok, I just can't see it as legitimate. I I see what you're saying. It's a valid excuse that it was a state of mind thing, but. You know, it was used by the media for the, uh, years, you know, to say he's a Russian agent. And, you know, our our country was was just completely enveloped in that for years. Sure. I mean, I, and I pers and I'm still to this it, day hearing about Hillary's emails. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the media likes well, to talk but, about Do you understand some? why that is. Do you understand why that is, though? It's just like I said, because people are like, you want us, to, you you want us to be like, oh, okay, yeah, Trump's a piece of shit, and we should just go on. Like as much as I think Trump, uh, you know, I I un understand and acknowledge all of his uh, negatives, I still see what's happening to him as as both unfair and a an actual authoritarian threat, an act the actual threat to democracy. And I'll tell you why I think that because. I don't think Trump could be an authoritarian. Uh, don't do that. I don't see how that would work. Excuse. Huh? Are you gonna oh, no, here, thing? listen. No, no, listen. So Trump, you, you can't just be an authoritarian. You can't just be like, oh, I'm authoritarian. How could you do that? You couldn't carry it out because literally every institution's aligned against you. But Joe Biden, Democrat, not necessarily Joe Biden, but yeah, could be Joe Biden. Democrats in general have all the institutional power to the point right now they're trying to imprison their main opponent ahead of the election. They're trying, they're removing him from ballots, which very undemocratic hey, actions. Let's that have go, never okay, happened. If we want to do this, we can go point by point. So number one, um, Biden does not have all the institutions. Okay. The house is Republican dominated and the Supreme court is six, three conservative. So we're wrong on that point. Number one, number two, you're saying Biden is trying to jail him. Biden does not tell the DOJ what investigations to do or conduct any of those okay. investigations. Wait, okay. if Biden controls the DOJ, then why didn't Trump control his DOJ? Right. It, it that goes back to his ability his abilities Stop. but hold on not his abilities Barr was a fan and friend of donald trump so if you're telling mm -hmm. me that biden has direct control over his doj why didn't trump have direct control over william no, Barr? And that's his what DOJ? i'm no you're making you're making my argument trump has not the ability to do the things that democrats are now doing and getting away with biden's so, doj is charging and our, our biden's doj is going after him these hardcore anti-trump democrat da's that ran on imprisoning him are throwing this cartoonish amount of indictments at him clearly to see what will stick uh, jack smith is clearly trying to get this uh, these uh 
trial's done before the election. I mean, it's pretty clear. And Joe Biden himself said that, oh, we're going to use constitutional methods to make sure Trump can't get in office again, which is what we're seeing play out right now. Quote, constitutional. Suddenly, suddenly attacking democracy, taking away Americans' ability to vote for who they want is pro-democracy. Do you think that there's a chance that maybe Trump did wrong things? Do you think that's possible that Trump actually committed crimes? Sure, sure, it's possible. But okay, so I, of all for, the indictments, based on everything we talked about yeah. up to this point, I'm uh-huh. very, I, it's very hard for for people to to agree with it. And okay, I wait, just wait, wait, let's, also let's, point out, well, let's. Oh, okay, right, you can. Ahead. Okay, yeah. Let's see if we can get through this section without bringing up uh, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, or Joe Biden. Okay, let's see if we can do this. No, but all right. okay. Do you yeah. think it's? But you understand why that is? Because I, yeah, hate when I you guys understand do why that. it's because Trump is indefensible. That. It's because Trump is indefensible. No, 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 no. It's because it's because you guys you don't you you call it whataboutism when it's really just us pointing to the fact that this standard had been set. You and, and it was treated completely differently than now. That's the only reason people bring it up. Okay. So which of Trump's indictments, okay, do you think are unfair? What are the charges that you think like this is bullshit? <laughs> well, um, I mean. Uh, Again, I'm not a constitutional constitutional scholar. I'm not a, a lawyer, so it's hard for me to say. You know, it, it, to me, it just looks like they're just trying to keep him from running. I, I mean, go down. Let's go down the list of charges. Okay, wait, just real quick. Are you familiar with Crossfire Hurricane? Yes. Okay. So you know the names of the specific FBI operations and the names of specific stories that were censored in the media about Hunter Biden. Um, do you know what Burisma is? Of course. Okay, of course. You know all these I know, things. You, you don't I know, know you're, about You're, you're really getting me on this because this is my Twitter pre- post. Well, no, 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 I'm not. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trying to Twitter post. I'm just saying that like the selection of what you're interested in is very wild to me given that these are probably some of the most historic indictments of U.S. history. You have indictments against a former president who's going to run again and who's like the front runner for the Republican Party, but you don't know any of the indictments. Why, like, how are you so against the indictments? You don't know anything about them. No, I, I do. I, I'm familiar, but I'm just on the spot here. and so I'm, Okay, that's fine. Okay, then maybe you've read stories about them, and I can grant that. Okay, I haven't personally read all of the indictments, so that's fair. Okay. But okay, so... There's then, a, like I just, said, there's a lot of them, Sure. Right? Okay, so let's just... Well, there's four major cases, okay, that I'm aware of. Okay, so let's look at one of them, okay? The Florida classified documents case. Do you think there's a chance here that Donald Trump did knowingly retain classified material and then lie and not return it? To, when requested by the uh, archive records and uh, FBI, is that possible I mean, that that happened? Ba- well, so sure, it's possible, but just knowing for one how you know Biden had. Uh, I know you don't want me to go back to Biden, but I, how can I not? Because okay. we've already set sure. the standard, so yep. I, I'm just trying to judge it by the same standard. Okay. So you know, Biden had these documents for decades, had uh-huh. no right to them as a senator. Yep. In his garage for yep. years. So right for and gets for the, the crime. Hook. Hillary Clinton, same thing. Gets yep. off the hook for the crime. The crime is that you have to knowingly retain these classified right. materials in a in a. Right. Why are you laughing? Wait, do you not care about the no, crime? No, because or? it's like knowingly. It's like okay, yeah, yeah, knowingly. Wait, what's so funny about that? So how do you prove that Joe Biden didn't know that he had those documents or that Hillary Clinton didn't know that she had these top secret documents or the intent? She didn't have the intent, the intent? Well, in all this. I know that it's crazy, but believe it or not, in U.S. criminal courts, we make these determinations all the time. So you might look for her saying something to somebody, uh, saying like, I know I have classified material there. You might have somebody saying something like, can you move those documents to my house? They're not supposed to be there. You might or have records destroy of- Destroy these Blackberries, something like that. Um, well, that's a really bad example because destroying cell phones was policy of anybody that right. kept um, any type of electronic device at the time. Everybody destroys material like that afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so for Donald Trump, in the indictments, I believe that the uh, as part of the charging statements, they're looking at specific statements that Donald Trump made to move what he knew was classified documents around his house, him making statements to other people saying, I know this is classified, I could have declassified it, but I didn't. Right, I'm um, aware of that. Yeah. yeah, and then him refusing to cooperate with investigators when they gave him over a year to turn the material back in. Well, that might be a way- refusing. Yeah. The refusing to cooperate thing seems a little specious to me just because his lawyers were in contact and were in the, involved in negotiations and all that. Hold on. Right? I'm sorry. Didn't he specifically tell his lawyers to hide boxes or have the lawyers specifically instruct people to move things around so federal investigators couldn't find them? Isn't that part of the indictment? Trump literally yeah, ignored I, yeah, court order subpoenas hey. to return stuff. Like, Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do remember there was some things like that where he just blatantly said things like when he was 
talking about having the secret documents that weren't signed and all that. So, okay. Yeah. And he told the aide to lie, and he even lied, I think, to his own lawyers at part. So this is probably a crime that Trump committed, yeah? Well, so here's what I would say about that. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. And I would say that the only difference there would be that Trump was too dumb to, to say those things on video or into people, whereas you know Biden and Hillary were probably much smarter about it. But you have no evidence whatsoever of any of that. That's just your guess. Well, I mean, Hillary Clinton, I know for I know you're saying that, oh, it's uh, it's just common practice to destroy these devices. Uh -huh. But, you know, you're t we're talking about intent and these devices get destroyed while I'm sorry. She's being Can I be clear? For these Do you things. think that it's not common practice to destroy those devices? Again, yeah, but this is possible. To, she was the, the uh, server. Dude, what if that I got showed wiped? you a federal? I'm pretty sure somebody even linked me like the standards for destruction of devices, like one year after, or as your per like this was like department standard shit. Like everybody that practices maintaining information on uh, devices like this will always destroy these. You don't think they throw them in a the trash can, do you? If you work for oh, the I'm state department, yeah, yeah, I'm fully aware. Okay, so but we can't just say that. May, like, you well, might, you, you might want to keep devices that might be uh, part of this investigation, right? But no, they were destroyed. So evidence gone. Sure. Then you, if you think that somebody's destroying a device after knowing an investigation is being uh, performed, then you have to prove that they did that. That that was something they knowingly did in contravention of the investigation. It's called obstruction of justice. Yeah. All right. Well, that happened though. They were destroyed while the investigation was going on. I don't think the investigation had begun yet when they were destroying blackberries. The story was out. The story was out. I don't know about a story. I'm just saying the investigation. The big, the big question over the Hillary investigation was the wiping of the server because that happened after the investigation had begun. That was the big yeah, thing. Well, not the destroying of the devices. The bit. Yeah. Right. That's a, that is another thing. That is another piece of evidence that goes towards intent. But yeah. Well, but the intent was if, whether it was Hillary Clinton's intention or the guy that ran the servers, which is what the FBI had to prove and they weren't able to prove it. Wait, who knows? Maybe Hillary did order that and they were just never found evidence for it and they shouldn't have given that guy immunity and, you know, maybe, but we don't have evidence for it. But we do have evidence that Trump, assuming everything in the indictment and everything that's been released is true, we know that Trump almost certainly broke these laws relating to mishandling of classified information. We don't, we can speculate on Hillary. We have no evidence of Biden. Do you have any evidence that Biden knowingly and intentionally was mishandling these classified documents in his house? Well, I mean, I don't know how we would ever know that, but yeah. Well, it could be him saying, hey, can you deliver this right. like classified what, document to my house? Right, that's be, what I'm saying though. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like had Trump not blabbed his mouth, you, you know, you wouldn't have anything, but yeah. I'll give you that one for sure. Okay, so then one set of indictments is probably credible. Um, there's the uh, the Jack Smith case, the federal one, saying that Trump was knowingly disseminating lies to the American public about um, voter fraud. It seems like Trump right. made a and lot I of- I totally disagree with that. Okay, so do you think Trump, even though everybody in his inner circle was telling him, hey, the Georgia thing, this isn't true. Hey, the Pennsylvania thing, this isn't true. Hey, the ballot boxes, we investigated, that's not true. You don't think that him hearing that from his inner circle and then repeating those same claims over and over again was showing that he was repeating statements? Well, that he knew okay, so, all right, so let's saying that this is actually happening and everybody's telling him this, that doesn't mean that he agrees with them for one. And number two, we're talking about state of mind and there were a lot of weird things going on with that election. You deny that? You deny like the pipes bursting, that the the putting the boards up across the windows while they're counting, all these videos of, you know, boxes coming out. Now I'm not saying that every one of those things was, you know, a nefarious action, but the state of mind at the time. Also, everything that we've talked about before uh, leading up to this about, you know, the Democrats going off about voting machines after he won. And so, yeah, I can see. And even me, as somebody who didn't think the election was stolen, even I was sort of like questioning it, you know, like, this do you is think that might have been scary. because there was like an unprecedented like microscope put under every single ballot counting area in the entire United States? Fine, but like we're talking about him knowingly lying, and I just okay. So are we going to say that the president of the United States can be so like intellectually, mentally disabled that maybe he believes something that is standing in stark contrast to every single person around him and in his administration, and he can have a reasonable reason to believe that? That's Donald. He can literally be the only person that believes these things. Does that sound like a reasonable sure. person to you? Yeah, I, he can have his own beliefs and thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. So Trump, so Trump can believe things that everybody around him is saying is not true. In that case, like then Trump could well, literally believe and I anything. I don't know that everybody. Could, where where are you getting that that everybody around him was saying this? Well, if you go through the January sixth select committee and you look at all the statements, they list like I think thirty different things where different people were telling him like, "Hey, uh, this Weren't, statement," and the, a lot of these are. Were some of those like secondhand? 
Weren't there a lot of those like secondhand, like reported from people saying that they heard that this was told to him or something like that? Nope. These are firsthand statements that were literally made. You've got the then deputy attorney general, uh, Jeffrey Rosen. Uh, you've got uh, the active deputy attorney, uh, attorney general, Richard Donahue. You've got uh, the Georgia secretary of state, uh, Brad Raffensperger. You've got attorney general Barr making tons of statements. Um, you've got... Um, uh, Georgia State General Counsel Ryan Germany. Uh, you've got the White House Press Secretary Kaylee uh, McC- McCannany. I don't know how to pronounce these names. Uh, Trump campaign senior advisor Jason Miller. Talked to him a lot. Um, you've got uh, National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. Um, yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure there are more. I think these are just some of the ones they listed. I think they've got like a full list of these. Um, if you click another thing, but like tons of people, basically every single person around him was saying the same thing. This is why people were getting I mean, mad when he was bringing in people like Sidney Powell and shit or um, Eastman. Like Trump had to like get these weird people from the outside to support his claims because literally nobody that was working in his campaign, that was working in the White House, that was working in the Republican Party, the RNC, nobody was supporting anything he was saying. Nobody credible was saying was supporting anything he was saying. Okay. And most of these people are Republican. So it's right. in their interest I mean, to keep him in power. Sorry. Right, I know, but I, I don't see... I, right, I get that. I understand. But I, but I still think that he could hear all this from all these people and still look at everything and be like, no, it was stolen from me. And, be- okay. and really believe it. What would he have to hear to to change his mind then? Or is he delusional I mean, at this point? Well, I mean, maybe nothing. I, maybe it is, but... So I mean, he can what? be delusional. You're comfortable with a president that is actually delusional. You said nothing can change his mind. That's the definition of a delusion. Hey... There was, after the Mueller report, and they said there was no collusion, everybody and the Democrats still believed there was Russian collusion. Really? Because I feel like after the, I feel like by the time the Mueller report came out, that talk had died down, and after the Mueller report died down, I'm pretty sure that almost completely died down. It did, it did. No, no. In fact, they came after Mueller. They were coming after Mueller after that. They all, it was Mueller time up until that. What do you mean they went after Mueller? Yeah, uh, because remember, it was like, it's Mueller time, but then the report came out, and uh, he basically said there was no collusion, and uh, yeah, and then everybody hated Mueller after that. They might have hated Mueller, but I'm pretty sure that talking point basically fell off after the Mueller report. No, that's not true. That's okay, not true. I disagree. Well, um, so you're saying that nothing Trump can hear, um, whatever can ever change his mind here. He has I mean, to believe that nothing, see, no amount of physical world evidence can ever change his mind on it. I, that's why I don't like th- this particular thing because I don't think that I don't really think that you could prove that he knowingly, like, oh, I definitely know I lie that the, I lost the election. Now I'm lying. I mean, so d- can you ever so, improve any crime with intent ever in the United States? We just drop all of that from the criminal code, like first degree again, murder. Like, that goes away because we can't ever know if it's premeditated. We can't know if it's state of mind. All of it becomes I already brought up like, to you. I already brought up to you that the FBI knew the Russian collusion thing was bullshit. No, no, hold on. No, 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 no. Anyway. Wait, whoa, whoa. I don't know why we're going back to Russian collusion. I'm asking, can we ever have a state of mind crime ever? Or does every single, all mens rea, all crimes relating to state of mind all have to be tossed? It's just like statutory offenses. Like if you do it, you're guilty and that's it. And no no state oh, of I mind mean, is ever ascertained ever. I guess if you have, no, no. Uh, I mean, like, again, I'm not, it's hard for me to answer this because I don't really know the standards for that. But I would say that. There are probably ways of knowing for a fact that somebody knowingly lied, like maybe written something that they wrote or something they recorded saying okay. that it's like, oh, look, you just said sure. there that you lost the election. Sure. How about Trump saying in 2019 that the mail-in ballots were going to be rigged, even though there was no evidence of that? How about him saying in 2016 that it's possible that they're rigging the election before he knew that he won? And then him continuing the same thing in 2021. When the evidence changes or the setting is different, he still repeats the exact same claims, even after he loses court case after court case, even after everyone in his inter- What would it take to convince you that Trump knew he was lying? I mean, I don't see how any of those things proves he was lying. Again, I pointed back to the Democrats knew that they lost, I'm but asking they still him, well, you're railed the against Democrats. I'm asking you specifically, what would it take to show you that Trump was lying? I just said a uh, recorded something recorded saying that, yes, I know I lost or something written, something showing that, yes, he definitely saw and knew that he lost, admitted it, acknowledged it, and yet still went out and said this. OK, so I would say then, it, yeah, you probably got him online. But other than that, like. Yeah, okay, so I, then if Trump ends up pleading guilty then to any of these charges, you're going to say like, oh, okay, well, I guess he did? Um, well, it's hard to argue against that if you plead guilty. However, I will say this, uh-huh. that when that when the government, the government can get you to plead guilty to things you're not guilty of. Okay, so and a I guilty plea experience. wouldn't work. I'm guessing no <laughs> confession then at this point would work. Um, no, it would have to be a prior written... Or, that. Well, because now you would just say it's part of a guilty plea, right? 
Well, well, look, look at Flynn. He pled guilty, but he only pled guilty because uh, they were pressuring to go after his son and stuff. Yeah, and but after, he was also you know, probably guilty of what they accused him of. He, w- he had been communicating with people that he wasn't supposed to and he lied to the FBI about that. It, can I, I'll tell you a quick story here, and this is why I have my thinking on this. So I, when I was like 18, I went with a friend through a drive through I had a BB gun in my back seat, And while I, uh, we had gone to this Arby's because his girlfriend was working, we ordered, pull up, and I'm paying for my food. I look back, and he has grabbed my gun, my BB gun. It's pointing it at the thing. He's like, give me all your money, <laughs> you know, joking. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, I yelled at him, paid for our food. We left. Well, I got pulled over later that night, arrested at gunpoint, uh, accused of robbing the Arby's, and they came after me uh, with three felony, and I'm not even the one who did it. It was the other guy, and uh, you know, I told them what happened. They never believed me. They came after me for all with all these felony charges, trying to put me away. We fought it, and fought it. Um, eventually, it got down to where they couldn't deny, I didn't do anything, and they offered me uh, uh, disturbing the peace, which I pled guilty to, just because I couldn't fight it anymore. I didn't want you know, to go to jail for something I was completely innocent of. So I said, yeah, I went along with it, but I wasn't guilty of anything. Do you think Trump the billionaire is going to get bullied because he doesn't want to fight? Okay, so then your story has no bearing on Trump. I don't know why this has nothing no, related to. No, I didn't say Trump. I, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, well, it, Okay, so it, I don't, absolutely. I'm just saying, no, no. They no. could, right, no, 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 no. He could plead guilty to something he has no way of getting out of uh, as a way of avoiding bigger trouble, I think. Well, yeah. you didn't plead guilty because you had no way of getting out of it. You said you pled guilty because you just didn't want to fight it anymore. Do you think that Trump well, doesn't want to fight? we couldn't afford to. Yeah. Do you think Trump can't afford to? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably, he's probably running out of money. I mean, he's begging people to send him money so he can, you know, all this money he's getting for the campaign he's using. Isn't for, Trump like one his, of the largest fundraisers in all of U.S. history? Like, I don't think Trump. Yeah, but from what I've read, he's using, the money he's using is all from like his campaign, which doesn't, which suggests he doesn't have a lot of money. Okay, so he's not a billionaire or did he lie about all well, of the money that he had too? Or I mean, could be. Okay, so for Donald Trump to have been lying deliberately about the election, even though he's repeating things that people have told him are not true, even though he was making the same exact claims before having any evidence, and he's made the same exact, same, same exact claims after, and even after he repeats lies that have been shot down in federal courts with his own appointed federal judges, none of that is enough to convince you he's lying. Why are you convinced again that the FBI was trying to coup uh, Hillary Clinton when none of them, or why are you convinced the FBI was trying to coup, coup Donald Trump when none of them have explicitly said, we are trying to coup Donald Trump? I th- why do I think that? Because the actions they took. They, Hold on. The, the actions they took. Why, they can't I, why can't I say the actions Donald Trump took? I'm sorry. I'm confused what you're saying here. If say you're saying that the action. So it seems like now you can ascertain a state of mind for the FBI when it's the actions they took. Why can't I ascertain Trump's state of mind with the actions that he took? Well, for one, so you're talking about the lie. You have. I, I said what I would. Something, an example of some things that I could get that would convince me that he's lying. We have those things when it comes to the uh, coup attempt on Trump. We have Peter Strzok's text messages that talk about, literally talk about, an insurance policy if Trump wins. Could he and have been talking about happens. how, like, even if Trump wins, he's going to be indicted on this Russia collusion stuff and then he's going to be gone afterwards? Why does the insurance right, policy exactly. have to be a coup? But maybe he thinks he actually committed those crimes. But... Well, first of all, I don't know if they knew about the Russia collusion thing at that moment, but it's a little more than a little odd to me that the guy who says he's got an insurance policy ends up being the lead investigator of this scheme, which the FBI knew was not legitimate. I don't understand. What are you implying? Are you well, implying that about, the FBI knowingly about, put a biased agent, biased agent in charge of this investigation? Is that what you're I'm just asking you're, what you're implying here. I'm not trying to say I'm just curious what you're implying. Yes, Absolutely. Okay, what? if the FBI think, is that You don't corrupt, think it's weird at all? You don't think it's weird at all? We're not all, asking if it was weird. We're not asking if it was weird. I'm asking you, and I'm just trying to figure this out again. So if the FBI was like knowingly putting biased agents on all of these cases and knowingly trying to fuck Trump, how the f*** they lose their case if it's all controlled by the deep state? Why didn't they just indict him with some bullshit? I mean, I feel like that's what's happening now. But I just asked you about the classified materials charge, and you seem to well, agree we were- that he probably broke the law. Well, he might have there. Maybe he did. I, I, I even told you from the offset that 
there's possibility that he did do something here and that I don't Okay, for the racketeering have... charges in Georgia, do you think it's possible that him making phone calls to the general secretary and asking for certain votes that he had no reason no. to believe were there, you don't think any of that no, was no, illegal? No. no. No, no, because that that's really uh, that's like a context thing, and no, I don't. I bet you that goes nowhere. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I think there's nothing there. Like saying find the votes. That's like, go, you know, get out there, recount, find you know where these votes are. He's not saying like literally manufacture votes, or at least didn't I think Georgia you could do read like that. two or three full uh, recounts, like an audit, and like two full recounts, and none of these came up with like hey. missing. Hey, I mean, uh, what's her face in Georgia? There was recounts she lost, and she continued to claim the election was stolen from her. Who? Um, fuck, what's her name? Stacey um, Abrams or whatever? Stacey Abrams, yeah, yeah. Um, did Stacey Abrams say the election was rigged, or? She said it was stolen. Uh, stolen through, like, uh... The lawsuit Voter. alleging discriminatory and suppressive election practices in Georgia. She went to court on that and she lost. But she's not claiming that it was rigged. She's just saying that the way that Republicans were, I get probably like gerrymandering or voter registration or some shit like that. I mean, this. do you notice how like every time it comes to like a Democrat election denial and this kind of thing, you've always got like this caveat that, that separates them and it makes it okay for them to do it? Do you understand that there's a difference between claiming these guys engaged in- It's always in different. <laughs> I mean, it just always is. Like you, you cannot, you cannot believe that it's just always different. And then when Democrats do this thing, it's always right. And if Republicans do the same thing, there's some reason, and it's wrong. I now. didn't say it was always right or always different. I'm saying there's a difference between somebody saying like. I think that enacting voter ID in this state is an attempt to discriminate against poor people to make you win the election. That's different than saying the machines were printing off different ballots than what the people were pushing the button for. Those are two okay, completely and I different pointed, claims. Okay, and fine. And I pointed you to, and I gave you the link to the video of Democrats making that claim for years after okay, Trump won. which was the video on this? Uh, if you scroll up, I, I need to use, I need to take a quick break here, but uh, if you... Okay, the voting yeah, machine real thing. Fast. Yeah, go yeah, for it. Just, yeah, Virginia I'll be right back. Using touchscreen. Virginia just stopped using touchscreen computer voting because it's so vulnerable. Right. We need to look at all the voting machines. Every secretary of state needs to be, you know, assisted in making sure that they are not being uh, hacked and, and attacked. I continue to think that our voting machines are too vulnerable. Her research has repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tempering. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switched votes from one candidate to another. The biggest seller of voting machines is doing something that violates Cybersecurity 101, directing that you install remote access software, which would make a machine like that, you know, a magnet for fraudsters and hackers. These voting machines can be hacked quite easily. You could easily hack into them. It makes it seem like all these states are doing different things, but in fact, three companies are controlling this. It is the individual voting machines that some pose, that pose some of the greatest risk. There are a lot of states that are dealing with antiquated machines right, which are vulnerable to being hacked. The workers were able to easily hack into an electronic voting machine. It was possible to switch votes. 43% of American voters use voting machines that researchers have found have serious security flaws, including back right, doors. Back. We know okay, I'm at one minute and 30 seconds of this video. Maybe it gets more severe later on, but these people are just expressing concerns about vulnerabilities in, the, in these machines, of which there were a lot of legitimate concerns. My understanding is that was one of the big reasons why a lot of these states took explicit measures, like for instance, requiring every electronic machine to, put, uh, to print a paper ballot trail, that a lot of these concerns were addressed prior to the 2020 election. But so far, I'm only a minute and a half through this, none of these people are saying that any election was hacked or rigged or stolen. They're expressing concerns over vulnerabilities in these machines. That's right. And, and this is right. And you got to in context again, this is right after the election. This is after they've said the election, like Nancy Pelosi's, you know, said the election's been hacked. Um, Nancy Pelosi said the election idea. has been hacked. Yeah. Yeah. You don't remember that? Nancy Pelosi election has hard. been hacked. You mean election was hijacked? Is that what it is? Hijacked? Or no, 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 no. Hold on. Um, It's a 
tweet, I believe, isn't it? This yeah, I see a tweet um, in 2017 saying, our election was hijacked, there is no question, Congress has a duty to hashtag protect our democracy and hashtag follow the facts. Well, hijacked, I mean... Somebody said hacked. Hold on. Um, maybe it wasn't Pelosi. Okay. I would say this is a dumb tweet from Pelosi. I don't agree with it. I don't think you should tweet stuff like this. I think it's bad. And, and, this, I, and I'm just trying to like make the case for like the environment at the time. I don't care what case so you're making. Your average- I'm saying that you're wrong on the facts. Donald Trump's lo- legal team took 61 cases to court alleging voter fraud, vote rigging, like all like hiding ballot boxes. Their claims were not that there were vulnerabilities in the machines or that Russian interference was like influencing the vote. They were making explicit. This is why Giuliani is getting disbarred. <laughs> like they were making explicit claims about voter fraud, about like electioneering, about like people, the 2000 mules video, like all this dumb shit. Like they, they were not even on the same level as these types of claims. Okay, well. Um, there is something else I, I wanted to ask you about. Sure. If we can. I'm just really curious on uh, your take on this. Okay. Just because, uh, I mean, we're going kind of round and round on this one. But um, but I, I am interested to hear those points. Those are all good points. Um, oh, wait, real quick. Just one more final question. What do you think yeah, about yeah. like the text that leaked from people at Fox News saying that they knew that the Dominion voting machine shit was fake? but they were still reporting on it. I don't see how, like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And Donald okay? Trump and continued just, to echo those clips. So even at Fox News, they knew they were fake. How did they know that, but but Donald Trump didn't? I, I don't understand how you know it's fake. Like, well, how, they, because how did one, they know that? Because one, there was no good source for the claims. They were coming from lunatics that were approaching Trump saying that Venezuela had some hand in it, number one. And number two, remember, the FBI themselves deconstructed one of these voting machines at the DOJ's request, and William Barr, I don't know if we can still find it on a .gov website, William Barr himself put out a statement saying, we tore down one of these machines we looked through it there is no evidence that any of these machines are being like controlled by venezuelan uh ghosts or any hacking shit was happening with it like they they, people checked but trump still repeated the claim okay okay it's just it's just (laughs) and i i see where you're coming from but it's just like to me i think about you know i know you're saying that when democrats did it when democrats did all these things it was legitimate and you know, hold maybe on. there was wait, wait. more to be clear, to it. Hold on. I don't think they were legit. I, for instance, I agree largely with what the Durham report said. I think there was a very toxic culture in the FBI, and I think political bias caused these people to do maybe irreparable damage to all of our institutions, if not at least all the intelligence agencies, and definitely to the FBI. I think there was a lot of improper behavior. That fake FISA warrant is a really fucking big deal. I think that the general culture in the FBI of not having people, not having red teams or whatever, testing them to make sure that they're staying honest or whatever, and securing them from political bias and the dropping the ball on the Anthony Weiner laptop, whatever. I think those are really big problems. I don't think they're totally clear of like everything. I think there's definitely things to be like looking over. But it's weird to think that there is a massive fucking conspiracy when you could probably explain it with the fact that Donald Trump was an unprecedented political figure that said unprecedentedly hostile and harsh things and made crazy fucking statements and surrounded himself with fucking lunatics. Like it's easily possible to believe that the people in the FBI really thought that he was like a dude working with Russia. Again, look at his ties to people like Manafort and the other statements he's made. And they tried their best, but like they fucked up because they were too politically biased. That's possible. You're the one that wants to jump to conspiracy. I don't think there's any proof of that. Um, well, what do you think about Ray Epps if there's no conspiracy? Because if there's one area where I think there's definitely definitely legitimate questions, it's Ray Epps. I'm just curious what you think about that. Because I think that ties in. I, you, I think I said at the beginning that if Ray Epps is the guy who incited those people, you can't blame Trump. But sure. I just wonder I've, been, I've just started digging into the Ray Epps stuff today. Um, and my guess is going to be there's absolutely nothing. There's no proof or evidence of the Ray Epps is probably one of the silliest conspiracy there. Even the QAnon stuff. Really? Yeah. Really? So what part do you think is silly? Literally all of it. First of all, is there any, what is, I don't think I've gotten to this part of the article yet. What is the evidence that Ray Epps was an FBI informant? Well, so it's funny. And when you read these articles, you you see them latch on to that specific like term or very specific terms like that. I don't know if he was working for the FBI. I don't know if he's an informant or what capacity he was working with somebody in the government. But the only reason that I think that he was, and there's only one reason, is because despite him being on video telling people uh, for the night before and the day of telling people to enter and literally storm the Capitol and being at the front when the riot began and admitting to orchestrating it in a text message. Okay. Yet hold on. He was treated, wait, wait, hold, hold on, on. Hold on. Wait, wait. He was you just lied about like half of that. So for one, I don't, no, I don't remember him. Hearing say, I remember him saying we need to take that. He also said though, peacefully, like you said, Donald Trump said, right? Uh, so, 
Every That's single time thing. he said peacefully, just to be clear. No, 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 no. There's one. There's one video during the night footage where he's like, "We need to. We need to go down to the Capitol." And everyone's like, "Fed, Fed, Fed." And he's like, "Peacefully, peacefully." But then later, he's like, "Hey, I'm probably going to go to jail for this, but we need to get into the Capitol." And then later, he's talking to Baked Alaska, and he's like, oh, "You know, they're arguing." And he's like, "No, we're here for something serious." And he whispers to him, and "He goes, we're here to storm the Capitol," which is. Interesting to me, since that is the like literal wording that was used afterwards immediately. But so you got that guy that's on video doing that. Okay, he's at the front. He did text his nephew and said that I uh, orchestrated it, and then yet he gets treated as a victim. He gets treated as a conspiracy theory. He's never charged until much, much later with a slap on the wrist misdemeanor. While grandmas with cancer who were just walking around got like actual prison sentences, he gets off, and yet they treat him like. That, that does that make any sense to what you? Is it? Okay, I haven't gotten to, to this part of the story yet. Where is the Ray Epps? Uh, what did he text his nephew? Um, he texted him. Uh, uh, I orchestrated it, and it is funny. Have you seen the sixty minutes interview with Ray Epps? There's um, a sixty minutes interview. I haven't and watched they, it they, yet. No. Okay. Well, they specifically bring that up, and it's funny because the whole the whole segment is done as if they're debunking a conspiracy theory. And they even the guy even says before he mentions it, he's like, "All oh, the conspiracists uh, believe that this is a smoking gun." Your text message to your nep nephew that you orchestrated it, and his explanation is like, "Oh, yeah, uh, my wife scolded me for saying that." <laughs> That's literally his response. There's like no answer for it. He's just sort of blown off, like, "Oh, okay, that's nothing." Like, <laughs> so you think that a 60-year-old boomer guy that shows up at the Capitol thinking that he's part of some historic fucking protest wouldn't brag to a nephew saying, that, like, I orchestrated it? That's, like, completely unfathomable to you. Well, no, no, here. So no, I, I think he did orchestrate, and I think that Okay, do you have himself... any actual... So, firstly, w let's go back to the first thing you said. Hold on, real quick. He has to yeah, be working yeah. for or with the FBI, right? Because if he's not, then... Well, I didn't say... No, no, I didn't say the FBI. I said... And the only reason I think he might have been working with somebody no, no, wait, in the government or something... Okay, yeah, go ahead. Is because of how, it's tre is because of how he's treated in comparison to everybody else. Okay, so, we ha so then, to be clear, then, we have no smoking gun, no hard proof whatsoever that he's working for any part of the government at all, then. Number Number one, right? The, right, right, okay. absolutely. Number one. Okay, then number two, for evidence that he quote unquote orchestrated it, are we relying on this one text he sent to his nephew? Well, no, and all the video of him literally orchestrating it. <laughs> uh, you mean of him saying, we're going to peacefully uh, storm the Capitol, or we're going to storm the Capitol tomorrow, we're here to storm the Capitol. <laughs> There's that, when he when they call him out as a Fed, is the one time he says, peacefully, peacefully. But then after that, there's a lot of, we need to enter the Capitol, I'll probably go to prison for this. He's like, he, he keeps telling people to stay focused, stay yeah. focused. How many people that night, how many people that night were telling people, we're going to storm the Capitol, let's storm the Capitol? Him. That was it. That's the only proof we have. Of you think he's the that. only guy in all of the January 5th people saying that tomorrow we're going to storm the Capitol, tomorrow we're going to take it? He's the only one? He is the one uh, uh, organizing people, yeah. He's what do you mean by when you say on. organizing people? If you say organizing, then yeah. we should have more proof than just uh, Baked Alaska's live stream. What is the organization? No, wait, wait, is no, he... no, 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 no. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, first of all, what more evidence do you need than actual video of him doing it? Well, I don't know. How about like what we had for the Oath Breakers, where people were sending text messages in advance, where people were bringing weapons, where people were coordinating text with cell phones. like I orchestrated it? Text messages like actually orchestrating it and not making a bragging claim to a nephew. No, but he did actually orchestrate it. In fact, when the riot first Yeah, I'm asking for starts, evidence of that, yeah. Right. At, when the riot first starts, he is at the front. So I don't know if you've seen this video, but I've seen there's the a video, video of him at the me. very front. Okay, where he whispers into the guy's ear. Their explanation for that, because the riot starts right after he does that. And his explanation, supposedly him and the guy he whispered to were interviewed separately and both said the same story. So that debunks it, even though they could have just coordinated. But he whispers to him and it starts. He says that he told the guy not to to riot he's like oh no i was telling him don't do it don't go into the capitol and that's very interesting to me because this is the guy that spent several days telling people to enter the capitol and then just before the riot starts he tells one guy not to do it and don't that, you think that if you him. look at if you look at the video and if you look at yeah. all the other video footage of him isn't he literally running around the entire day saying like hey stop fighting hey be peaceful no. hey these are cops no he's literally running around all day telling people to enter the capitol
oh, okay, you're just wrong on that. You're not even familiar with the conspiracy because um, I'm literally- no, I am very, I'm you're... familiar with like, dude, this is probably one topic I know the most about. So yeah, okay. show me the video. Show me a video of him telling people not to do it. Here's an article. I know he has here's claimed. The, here's, the I know revolver. He has... here's the revolver article. And then... This says Reet Rayev's the Fed protected provocateur who appears to have led yeah. the very first one. My attack. understanding is that this is the uh, this is like the first big article that like exposed Rayev. So I'm going to kind of, I'm trying to read it from the, your guys' oh, source okay. to see okay. what you guys are saying. Um, I've never read this one. So you've seen the video of him talking to the one guy where I don't know if he's talking about a dude's microphone or in this article it says a bear spray, but the guy's like, hey, like, don't take that in. You don't want to get shot. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't take that in. Okay. Yeah, don't take that but in. You don't want to get wants shot. Him to go in. Oh, I, maybe, but he's not telling him. He's just saying, it seems like if you look at all the videos on the Seems day, like he's protecting the officers <laughs> who he, he might be working with. Wait, he, he's working? Wait, so now you think he is working with the officers? No, I didn't. What I Wait, so wait the guy that's inciting you, you the riot is also listen, working with listen, the officers? Or listen, what, I don't, yeah. Listen, listen, you, speci you specified FBI, and I said it's not necessarily the FBI. It could be any government agency. It could just be loosely working with uh, an element of the Capitol Police. I don't know. It, uh, all I know is that there's a lot of okay. these strange questions that don't have good answers. I don't think these are strange questions at all. Okay, so if oh, you control okay. F, if you control F, so, wait, control F and look for hurt that afternoon okay there's a 31 second video okay i know because i'm going all over this stupid shit today um i think he's like walking up and down this line like trying to calm people down we can you we can start at the same time if you want at zero 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 i'm at the video that says i see him walking up and down the line i don't know what he's doing well okay well here let's play it at the same time and we'll listen okay uh, it's but hold on this is the guy that okay go ahead okay three two one play Run. I would have came locked and loaded if I knew this was happening. Take a step back. Take a step back. We're holding ground. We're not trying to get people hurt. They don't want to get hurt. You don't want to get hurt. Just back up. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, no, they don't. 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 Hey, where with you guys? Where with you guys? We fight for you in the street. Hey, hey. We can, I can keep scrolling because there's other videos here. It seemed like all he was doing on the day of January 6th was telling people like, hey, like, uh, stop. Even that guy that he whispered into his ear initially. Wait, they, there's actually a statement of what he actually said? What did he actually say to him? Um, he, well, he claims, well, okay, so the guy he whispered to and him both apparently told the FBI that he told him not to get involved and not to, not to riot. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause I think that, yeah, I feel like there's one other video. I'm pretty sure we saw, maybe it's one of those larger ones. Right, where but he's like, do you understand? People, yeah. Do you understand the absurdity of that though? Like he's literally getting people whipped up for two days, literally to storm the Capitol. Okay. And then he whispers to one guy, one single guy whispers to him, don't riot just as a riot starting. It's just weird to me. Like that, that makes, that makes it, sense. It makes because you're so lost down this conspiracy, you can't even stop to like look and see like what's plainly in front of you, right? It looks like. <laughs> oh, no, I feel it, like you're doing that. Oh, I feel okay. Like you're doing well, that. that's funny because none of my claims require evidence that I can't substantiate, and all of it seems to like be pretty reasonable and it's supported by all of the evidence. And if you want to make a counterclaim, that's fine. But we can go through it. Here's my narrative. This is what it looks like to me. This is what I had written down. Okay, I wrote down two points. Boomer guy who believed that Trump genuinely thought the election was stolen, so he showed up to protest in the Capitol but he wanted things to remain peaceful. And the second point is he probably didn't have any major connections and probably wasn't involved in any violent coordination. And when I look at all of the videos and all of the narratives and everything about this guy, that seems to be true. It seems like he was some old dude. He's patriotic. He's probably a Trump supporter. He obviously used to be part of the Oath Breakers or whatever the fuck or the Oath Keepers in the past. He wanted to go down a protest. And when he got to the actual Capitol and he saw that things were getting violent, he probably didn't want things to get violent because the guy's a veteran he doesn't want to see cops and people getting fucking killed and hurt because that's not what he wants because most most of the people there probably didn't want that because generally that's not how conservatives are protesting in these areas right i don't think anything about what is there anything that i just said in that story that's completely and totally unbelievable or wild or crazy well yeah <laughs> i mean because he he was literally telling people to storm the capital how can that how can you storm the capital without being violent but he literally is saying, okay, how can you tell your people to fight like hell and take your country back, but not be violent? Because that's what Donald okay. Trump said January 6th. Can you please make these two right. points reasonable to me? Yeah, absolutely. I can, because fight like uh, uh, political language telling people to fight is very common. Really? Telling people to storm the Capitol is very, very specific. 
So storm the Capitol. No, do you but deny it, that Democrats don't always talk about fighting? We're not, don't, we're not going to the Democrats right now. Okay. Oh, On but, this point, I'm trying to figure just out. said that this. Okay. I'm trying to figure out that this guy, when things were getting violent, okay, he obviously was uncomfortable with what was happening. It seems like he's walking around t- trying to de-escalate people. He didn't even go into the Capitol. He's trying to tell people, like, hey, calm down. Right. We're not here to fight these guys. The police officers aren't. That's our- interesting too, right? No, not really. Um, and then you compare that with the behavior of, say, like Donald Trump, who told people to fight like hell, who sat and watched on TV as all the violence unfolded, yeah. as aid after aid after family member after family member after uh, security advisor after security advisor came in and talked to him and he didn't say anything. All they did was tweet to, to rile them up even more, saying that Pence failed us. It seems like one of these guys wants somebody to be violent. The other guy pretty obviously doesn't. The, the guy that told people to storm the Capitol doesn't want to be violent. Doesn't It doesn't seem like it. And so, and so here's, and so here's the the other question that I have about this. That all, you know, did the, Epps even say the storm re- the Capitol? Did he actually say the word storm he the Capitol? He did. He did. Let me go find the original video. Which is here. I'll I'll find you the actual clip of that. Um, but I, I always found that, that strange, just because that's the exact wording that uh, you know our media no, 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 used. The, so, the same wording um, that what? That that that's the same uh, like wording that our media use after is that the, the capital was stormed what are you implying i don't it just seems odd to me that no no, no. Would, what seems he, odd about that because he's the first one we hear use that language and then that's the exact language our media uses. you think so let me just so I, to try to figure out your state of mind you think that he was the first person that night on january 5th to use the phrase storm the capital he was the first well, person he, to talk about Right, that's that's who we have on video. Who, the guy that's whipping the crowd up, he's using that language. Yeah, and and here, here's here's my other thing. Okay, how do you explain how he's treated by Democrats, by the media, compared to a, literally anybody else associated with January sixth? Well, right now, Even people the, are probably sympathetic towards him because he became like the lead of a, like a conspiracy to pin makes, the entire. Sympathetic. Like we're talking about you guys. Like the the whole narrative is that it was an attack on the Capitol, and here's a guy telling people to enter the Capitol and storm the Capitol. He's on video doing it, and yet... Why do you think... Hold on, wait. Why do you think people are sympathetic He gets no charges? Them? He gets no charges? He he's, did get he's charged. Literally, he got charged years later with a misdemeanor. Sure. With not even, not, not even any jail time. Sure. While other people while other people who were just standing around the Capitol got jail time. Who was okay? just standing That's around the Capitol and got jail time? Because every um, single person uh, in this article where they say that, I look up their charges, and their charges are usually some serious shit. No, like look at the look at the grandma with the can- grandma with cancer. She she walked around, gave some speech, or she gave a prayer and then left, and she got arrested. Uh, there's Owen or uh, you Owen Sawyer. You should just give me a give me a you should just give me a uh, give me a person, and we can look up their charges. I'm curious. Also, let Here, me listen to this video real quick. Hold on. Tomorrow, okay. we need to go into the Capitol. So on video, I hear him say, "We need to go into the Capitol." Into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. Hold on. Tomorrow. I don't even like to say it because I'll be arrested. I don't like to say it'll be arrested. We need to say, go. I'll say it. We need right. to. We need to go in. in. Shut the fuck we need to go in the Capitol. to the Capitol. Oh, oh wait, hold on, real quick. Wait, is there a video of him saying we need to storm the Capitol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get, it. I'll get it for you. One second. Okay. Let me look for it. Ray Epps storm. I got the it right Capitol. here. I got it right here. Maybe it's because you're my neighbor. Where you at? <laughs> then he leaned in and with- Okay, we're not here to fight, man. We're here to storm the Capitol. I'm not kidding. We're here to storm the Capitol. Isn't he still doing literally the call for peace right up here? We're not here to fight? No. No, he's it's saying something. amongst each other. Think he apparently because those two were arguing because make the last up. Loud. Remember, he called him a fed <laughs> when he started telling people to go to the Capitol. He's like, no, no, fed, fed. Everyone starts calling him a fed. And then that's when he says, peacefully, peacefully. And that's the, that's literally the only time that happened. That one moment changed what or that we have video of anyway. Ray Epps. Okay. Here's another just a random question. So I'm curious what your opinion is on this, okay? If he was obviously a fed and a glowy and he was telling people to storm the Capitol, why is it that Baked Alaska actually did it? Right. I, hey, that's what I'm asking. I always found that dumb, too. I'm like, you knew it. You knew he was or you suspect he's a fed. You knew what he was saying was going to get people in trouble. And yet you took part anyway. Although doesn't that show he, that he probably didn't incite it? Also, to be clear, this storm, the Capitol line, that's not something he shouted at a crowd. That's something he whispered to. Um, well, that, we don't know how many we don't know how many other people he said that to. But so you sure, think he was walking around that. that's the only okay. video. 
That's the only video we have him saying storm the Capitol. Okay. But and every again, other video where he's know. shouting, he's saying we need to go into the Capitol and be uh, peaceful. And we need to go into the know, Capitol, though. And hold real quick. When you're talking about like, oh, well, he did that. And then he wanted people to be peaceful. Uh, um, why did he then brag to his nephew about it? That he orchestrated it? Yeah. Pro- probably because he wants to look cool because he's a 60 year old boomer. I, what do you mean? I don't know, man. Like that, that's just weird to me. <laughs> All these things are weird to me and I just don't have any, leg- if he was, no okay, answer on, that stop. satisfies When you say me. that's weird to me, what you're saying is I know for a fact that he did something illegal and no, there's no. no evidence for it. No, no, I'm saying I have not heard a, re- I've not heard a good explanation. Do you know any old people in your life ever? Oh, no, absolutely. But that, do what, any of them ever the brag thing, or say weird wait, shit about like their wait, military wait, wait. records? Yeah. Just let's let's look at the charge he got compared to other people. He literally incited a riot to storm the Capitol. No, and it's a misdemeanor. The incitement to riot? I don't think you have that here. What? What is that? It's an incitement to riot. And and look at the amount of people that he got to do it. If if he in fact was what do you the mean blame, the amount of people he got to do it? Why do you even think he's the one that's getting people to do it? Donald Trump's speech ended and he told people to go to the Capitol. Right and right and that's how I started out this whole argument. Remember, 120 over 120,000 people marched peacefully, just like he said. It was this small group that got violent, and then I got to wonder what made them violent. We got guys like Ray Epps, literally acting like a leader the whole time, like you said, pacing up and down the line. We and what we about know the people heat? like the Oath Breakers who were texting and coordinating beforehand to like set up, and the people that were actually breaking into the Capitol building. Right. So, and we talked about that. There was around 300 people that were charged with breaking and, and around. Wait, don't you think they might have done something to make it violent? What about the people that were actually fighting with cops that were brawling right. with cops and throwing? You think Ray Epps talked to each and single every one of those people? Ray Epps convinced well, no, all of them to what, fight? No. Here's what I think. When you watch the video, it was relatively calm up until the point where uh, the tear gas and con- concussion grenades and stuff started going into the crowd. Then it started getting super rowdy, and. You know, I don't know. I don't know what started it. It's that's a question I think should be asked, and it's odd to me that it's not. It's odd to me that the, the well, it seemed like large what started of, it was it was there was a crowd of people. They were all there to protest. They started to get rowdy, and as riots do, they just kind of spawn. Usually, there there's not okay, always well, like an inciting moment or whatever. But <laughs> I mean, except for what we have on video, the inciting that's on video. What do you mean the inciting? The guy that he talks to isn't even the guy that breaks into the into the fence. Right, I know, but... but so how is he inciting? He's not, he's not even talking to the guy that ends up... And he's, also, the people are already basically like trying to break in before that. They're all getting rowdy back and forth. Right. How many of these people did he did he whip up the night before and the day of? I, I don't know. That I don't know. What do you mean? How many? Right. You think he talked to every single one of the people that are in frame there? They all know who he is? Um, no, I'm not saying they all do, but I'm saying that he was taking, he took this position as sort of a, a leader trying to organize it there. If you watch all that footage, he's constantly telling this group, stay focused, stay focused. He's trying to keep everybody focused on this idea. We're going to go to the Capitol. We're going to go in. We're going to storm it. He's trying uh, to keep people stay focused because people in the crowd are talking about like BLM and Antifa and shit. And he doesn't want people to be fighting each other. He wants people to be there protesting the politicians. That's well, the, no, because no, it's when they start calling him a Fed, and he's like, oh, "No, no Fed, stay focused." No, no, it was stay focused. Was after there was that other girl with the micro or the megaphone where she was screaming, and he was trying to say, "No, stay focused. It's not about Antifa or BLM." We can, I can find the video on this too if you want. We well, right, look. no, no, you're right about. I, I know what part you're talking about, right? But it, it, again, man, I, I feel like you're kind of playing dumb here. Like, what? I'm not. Pl- Hold on. To be clear, let me just give you the macro summary. My version of events is there's a boomer dude. He likes Trump. Uh, he believes that the election was stolen and he wants to go down and he wants to protest. And he's on video saying, we're going to go into the Capitol, but be peaceful. We're going to go into the Capitol, be peaceful, telling people the night before. And then the next day, when things are getting rowdy, he's walking around saying, Storm like, the Capitol hey, hold peacefully. on, stop <laughs> laughing because you're laughing at Trump's speech when everybody in the world and this your leader is about to go f- down in federal prison okay deservedly so i wish you guys would too okay but this guy okay is on camera everybody can see him right saying, i have like, no idea hey, i have no doubt camera, that no, you hold on, i'm just saying your every, everybody you're bro you voted for a guy saying lock her up lock her up lock her up lock her up what do you right. mean where's the pivot right. donald trump is the one that said he wants to suspend the constitution to investigate voter fraud that he couldn't find for four years donald trump is the one that says he wants to revoke citizenship from americans that burn right. the flag which is you're the first doing- amendment right donald trump is the one that said i want to open the libel and defamation law so i can sue the Media. Donald Trump is the one that says uh, the media is the enemy of the people. Donald Trump is the one that asks about, like, I don't know what, what comparison right. you're trying to true, make, okay? I know. That's all true, by the way. That's, I know, of course, because you're an authoritarian. I understand, okay? No, I'm but regardless. Not, but you got, 
I'm an authoritarian. Yeah, See, of you course, guys are obviously. so about what Trump says he's going to do. But when you're the ones actually doing those things, you convince yourselves that, oh, no, it's different. And the reasons we're doing it for it is justified. That's yeah. how you get authoritarian. Because there dude. are reasons for why people do it. things. That's what we just it. talked no. about today. We talked about what are the reasons why people do things. You have nothing. And I've got sworn testimony from like 50 different people surrounding Donald Trump for the past five years. All you have are, are weird videos posted by dudes that probably jerk off to thumb boys about how Ray Epps said the night before go into the Capitol and now you think this guy led the charge but you're willing to let Donald Trump off the hook for his 60 minute speech earlier where he said he needs to fight like hell and take the country back and when big when peacefully. big when big oh he did this guy said did. peacefully over and over again too who do you no, think he didn't he did not he did not he really did not. who do you think got more people how do you to go? storm the Capitol peacefully by walking it wait okay hold on wait so you're <laughs> telling me every you're telling me every single person in the Capitol wasn't being peaceful then I'm sorry is that going to be your new claim we can go with that if you want what you said Every earlier the grandma that was walking through the capitol uh she wasn't doing anything do you think most of the people that were quote unquote storming the capitol most people in the capitol you think all of them were not peaceful then are you going to tell me right didn't storm they walked in they those people walked in there was definitely a group that stormed and i have no hard i don't have a hard time believing that rayups was able to incite that amount of people you uh, think Ray and, have, and nobody else has video proof of this just the seven same grainy videos nobody else has good proof of him there oh, was no grainy video what yeah the, what We've got like, video. It, like it's not real. It's, I didn't it's say crazy, it's guys. not real. It's, it's, I'm just saying that we've got we've got some live streamers with video. Nobody else has anything to say about him. We don't have any concrete proof of connecting him to the government. We don't have any concrete videos of him telling people to go in and do crazy shit. I can't None give of that. You, I said uh, so. I started this out by saying that I was going to raise a reasonable suspicion. What do you, there's, no, that, there is no reasonable suspicion. Well, there might be. The FBI might have investigated him and they let him off because there was no reason to think that he was actually inside. Let him off, right? So. How is it that you all hate everybody? Like you just said that you you would like to see Trump supporters go uh, get in prison, right? I think people that support the insurrection and the invasion of our capital go. and the delay and of so, the peaceful transfer right. of power is fucking crazy. Yes, that right. is insane. So, so this is how this is how we get authoritarianism because you guys have all the insti institutional support. You have the media. You can create these narratives and, and repeat them endlessly until they become real, even though they're not. And then you use that as your justification for the authoritarian takeover and cr criminalization of your opponents, which is what we're watching. It, that, oh. Make no mistake, that's what we're watching. You've already, by the way, that could be your narrative now, but you already admitted earlier that Donald Trump broke at least one law in one set of indictments. So you're, that law, by the way, is totally I, morally Hillary bankrupt. Hillary Clinton broke laws. And oh, the really? Law which one did she break? Which one? A oh, okay. Which law did she break? She she uh, 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 criminally mishandled sensitive uh, top secret data on that server, but oh, because well, her on. investigator was there, was there... because her 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 investigator literally uh -huh. changed the wording so she could avoid prosecution. No, the so FBI there. was yeah. not able to prove that she had intentionally hidden classified information on her server, intentionally mishandled it. That's part of the criminal statute. If you don't like it, go to Congress and change the law. You have to intentionally mishandle data for it to be a crime. Well, I that's why you're bringing up Biden as a comparison did. when Biden found the documents or his lawyer did and said, hey, by the way, we've got classified documents. Come here and get it is a lot different than the FBI giving oopsies. Donald Trump a year, a year oopsies. to return it. That he didn't. That is an oopsies. Welcome to intent. Didn't Biden have them for decades. It doesn't matter. Stuff can be retroactively <laughs> classified. Right. Do you understand how the law works? Do you know any part of the law or do you just have opinions about it? I guess Donald Trump is the most lawless fucking kid I've ever had, so it makes sense. I started this out by explaining that, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a it's not about you. It's, it's not about you being a lawyer. It's about you. You're trying to sell me a story that this 60-year-old fucking boomer guy whipped up more people to break into the Capitol than the president of the United States, Donald Trump, who has spent the last four years winding people up to believe the election was going to be rigged and stolen, knew people in his crowd had weapons, sent them to march on the Capitol to protest protest or your first argument was well he was telling them to go that they were going to vote them out even though he was sitting there because he said all the elections were rigged which doesn't make any sense you're trying to tell me that this guy had a greater responsibility for the invasion of the capital than donald trump yeah absolutely and That's i proved it with the number i proved it i, I at least re i raised a reasonable suspicion by saying there's a it was literally mostly peaceful which i we started this out with me asking you if you thought those riots for multiple years, Democrat riots were mostly peaceful. You said yes. Suddenly, that doesn't apply in this state. In this wait, case. what Why? doesn't apply here? What do you mean? This was one riot. It was, and a it was mostly not peaceful. peaceful protest. Most of the people at this riot were peaceful. Sure, I agree with that. What does that have to do with anything? Well, if if Donald Trump was telling this massive crowd, you know, to go and 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 stop the uh, process, wouldn't a lot more than a handful, a relative handful of people, have taken part in that? I don't know. In BLM like, riots, I, I, hold on. In BLM riots, do you think the majority of the people are rioting?
How many, what percentage in a BLM ride do you think are the people actually riding? And my guess in those rides is probably like 1%. I doubt that it's I like say, in a 10,000 man ride, I would I say, a thousand people are like breaking windows and shit. Well, I would say watch watch the daytime videos of the protests and all those people that are wearing helmets and, and masks and all those people, those are the people that go riot when it gets dark. And there's a lot of them. So I don't know. A I, lot of them? Okay. You know, well, you I've also I watched like the videos of, of all the people going through the Capitol building and that looked like a riot to me. They were breaking windows. They were breaking through. Did Ray Epps convince them to do that? Some people. Some people. Yeah, he said storm the Capitol. How do you storm the Capitol? You got, that's how you got to do it, right? Well, he did. He said storm the Capitol. It's weird guy. to me. It's weird how dismissive you are of it. It's weird how the media is dismissive of it. And the Democrats, all these same wait, wait, people hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who literally who, who would be totally fine with Trump supporters getting rounded up. Like you just said, suddenly this guy, it's okay like you're like, oh, he's rounded up. What do you think? Hold on. What do you think I'm being dismissive of? Of his role and and yes, the correct. fact that he gets, not being, he gets a slap said, on the wrist. I don't think he should have he said gets a slap on the wrist. I don't think he should have said go into the Capitol. What I'm dismissing is your wild claim that this fucking guy unilaterally instigated the entire fucking riot. That's wild. Oh well, when you say instigate the entire riot, again, we're talking about a relatively small handful of people compared to the larger protests. Right? You can call it relatively small, but two thousand people were in our Capitol building looking for the lawmakers. Uh, oh, no, 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 that's not true. Uh, there was a, there was. I w I'll give you three hundred or so, maybe maybe a little bit more than that. 400, 500, maybe people were doing that. No, uh, I'm not saying charge. I'm, not, I'm saying charge. I'm saying, I think at the end, I think the estimate was about 2,000 people had made their way through the Capitol. Correct. Yeah, it's about that. Well, yeah, uh, close to that. It was around 900, just short of 1,000 that were charged with trespassing. But again, you're, well, you you do realize there's tons of video of the police like leading these people in. Opening no, there's the doors, not. Removing, no, there's not. Removing barricades. There is. There is. No, we can go through yeah, every single one if you want. And every single one has been proven to be bullshit. They, I did this two years ago. I can walk through the proven same thing with bullshit. you. Yes. So don't believe your lying eyes, basically. No, we can go through. No, you're just believing because you've seen select videos. If you want, we can do this right now. I've got five more hours. What do you think the media has been pumping out for the last few years? You don't think that's select video? Then let's go over it. What video do you want to look at right like, now? Explain to me why the, the 120,000 peaceful people never come up in this. It's First of all, I don't even know if 120,000 people were there. And that's you're now you're pivoting to a totally different argument. I want you to, what are videos where you think the police are escorting people in or showing people around? Okay. All right, well, okay, I will. Uh, let's see. Like the QAnon shaman, that's a good one. Oh, did my my uh, headphones might have just died? One second. Uh -huh. Shit. Oh man, my headphones are breaking as we speak. Uh, one second. Can somebody link me these the grandma person's charges? My speakers here. I'm curious what she was like actually charged with. There we go. I should be able to. Oh wait. Sorry, I had Bluetooth headphones on and they died. There we go. I should be able to hear you now. Test. Uh huh. Can't hear you. Yeah, I should be able to hear you, but I can't. Are you talking? Hello? Hello? Oh, okay, I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, here we go. I got it. Here we go. So this is a, this video is interesting to me just because you do see a lot of videos like this where they're just kind of walking around with people. And especially it's odd that they're like trying to open doors for them and they eventually lead them right into the the main hall of Congress there. Or yeah. Okay. Glad we've got Tucker Carlson footage on this. Thank God we can get the real story. Yeah, but story. what does that what the hell does that matter? Like the fact that the, like this is footage that was being hidden from you and Tucker Carlson got it so you can see it. Why why do you fail? Why would you prefer that footage this footage was being hidden? Be hidden? Was it didn't everybody live stream this? What do you mean it was being no. hidden? This footage was part of the footage that was not initially released. What do you mean released? Why, it was wasn't it all of this posted on the internet? Like wasn't not, it all live streamed? Not not the one I just linked you. This was part of the footage that was held back. Oh, not this CCTV. He was the only one to get the footage from Congress. Okay, what do you think you're... Tell me what you think you're demonstrating with this video. 
Well, it, well, okay. So I'll, I'll just echo what the Capitol police chief himself said that mm -hmm. he believes it was a setup. I think, wait, 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 hold on. Link me that statement. Link me that statement. The Capitol police okay. thinks that the whole riot was a setup. He thinks, uh, well, he thinks that basically what happened is that certain powers wanted it to happen. They, they allowed it to happen. The Capitol police chief himself was trying to, so, okay. Back when Trump was elected, uh, during his inauguration, there was a riot. I don't know if you're aware of this. There was a riot. I think around 60 police were injured. Um, there's reports on it at the time, and there's one specific one that I usually show also, people. But also, real quick, on this Tucker Carlson footage, it looks like he, they literally just like escorting this dude to like other police. What? No, they're no. They es they end up escorting him to the main hall of Congress there, where he gives his speech or he does his whole. That's where we see him. You know, the all those pictures of him in there. And then they, he got arrested later for it. So uh, he was actually released from prison soon after this video came out. And I'm not okay. What is the if had... what is the shady or bad? It looks like they're escorting him to a place where they've got where they've cornered off a bunch of the protesters. They got him during his room. trial during during the QAnon shaman's trial. They did not. He did not have access to this footage. Okay. Why did they keep that? I don't hidden? know. You're pivoted to a totally. That's, different... I'm think, asking no, you. No, what's I'm not wrong pivoting. With the, what's wrong with the That's... footage that I'm looking at? What is it supposed to prove? That guy was one of the most like iconic uh, insurrectionist people, correct? He got jail time. Okay, I'm gonna He's ask this again. He's just being led around by this, police. What was this footage? He was being led around. Okay, so you're telling me that his whole coming he, into the Capitol, police escorted him into the whole building. He wasn't. Yep. Yep. Okay. Do you along have, with a lot of other people? Did you have the initial thing of his, so no windows were broken, no doors were broken. It was just the he. They picked him out of the crowd. And they're like, hey, come walk through the building and come check this out. Wait, it's what it looks like. Here's this New York Times article. QAnon, or wait, oh, I can't read it. It's not, it's behind a paywall. Um, but I noticed they accuse him of storming the Capitol. QAnon shaman who stormed the Capitol in horns. He pled guilty to a felony obstruction of an official proceeding. It's weird that like, um, what's his face? Okay, Bowman, hold on. Who pulled the fire alarm and lied about it? Didn't he obstruct an official what, proceeding? I don't, bro. Why you're is no, jumping why are Democrats totally never charged? Totally different. That. That's a totally different. It's always different. It's always. And, different. No, what do you mean? By definition, that's different. Every time I'm trying to talk about a particular thing, you would just like the most unrelated shit in the world. And if that guy did pull a fire alarm, stop a vote. If that guy did pull a fire alarm, stop a vote. He should have been. Uh, he should have been uh, in trouble for it. I don't know the, whatever it is, but he should have gotten he in did. trouble for it. One hundred percent. He got a he got a slap on the wrist that he assured uh, uh, he uh, he assured. I, hold on. I don't the care. Press. I don't care about this pivot. I stupid I don't care. Okay. They're wiping so, his record. Yeah. Government. Um, okay. So I'm looking at a court document. United States District of Columbia for the district or United States District Court for the District of Columbia, U.S. versus Ethan Nordian. Okay. At all dependent. Um, so here's a part that says the videos are not exculpatory. Pozzola's possession of the videos is dispositive of his Brady claim. Nonetheless, the record should be clear that the videos in question are not exculpatory of Pozzola or any other participants in the siege of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. In fact, the videos of Chansley's movements throughout his time in the Capitol are highly inculpatory of Pozzola, Chansley, and other writers captured on them. Pozzola's argument seems to be the snippets of Chansley's, Chan Chansley's movements that were televised by Carlson established that there was no emergency necessitating the suspension of proceedings. The televised footage lacks the context of what occurred before and after the footage. Chansley entered the building as part of a violent crowd that gained access as a result of Pizzola's destruction of a window, and he traveled with Pizzola during the initial breach. And Justice Defendant Brig, or Biggs had recounted in a recorded statement after January 6, 2021, by the time Pizzola forcibly breached the Capitol and Chansley rode his coattails, the mob, through the sheer force of its size and the violence of those within it, had wrested control of portions of the Capitol grounds and the Capitol itself from a vastly outnumbered U.S. Capitol Police Force. So are you telling me all yeah, this is, is a lie? Why? Right. Why was that? Why? Why did Hold they on, bash Please don't stop. Before we, you can we can talk about this if you want next, but don't pivot off of this. So then, do you acknowledge then that that video that you just showed me that was very carefully curtailed by Tucker Carlson is lacking any of the context we need? Well, because you just told me that he didn't violently enter. You told me that the police escorted him in. So right. did the police escort he, him in, or did he come in after a violent breach? Which one of those is true? He was not part. Of, he, did, as far as I know, he did not commit any violence. He was not charged with any violence. I didn't ask you that. I said, did he was okay. he escorted in by the police like you initially claimed, like one minute ago, or did he come in as part of a violent breach? He came in at, probably after the violent breach, but he was escorted. We can clearly see by this footage that was hidden from you, hidden from the public, until Tucker Carlson got it out to the public. Yeah. I don't know if it was hidden from the public. No, I don't it absolutely 
100 percent was hidden they were trying to keep it from the public they kept saying oh no this is going to put people in it's going to uh, put people in danger if we release this okay um I, I don't even know if that's true, and I don't. The, the, the truth is, is that so, the media are the ones real who cherry quick, picked. Um, well, Tucker Carlson is the media, and he just cherry picked so, you, right? So, Which is why you yeah, just Tucker told Carlson me a little bit added ago. Added context. That's added context. Do you think getting a smaller clip is adding context? Is the shaman guy here? Oh, so here. Okay, so okay. You had, I'm so sorry. You knew nothing wait, wait. about this. No, I didn't. I know. It, right? That's funny. I know nothing about this two minutes ago, and I've already determined you lied about everything you said. That's the comedy of this. Yes. I didn't lie about anything. You did. You said. Hold on. You said police peacefully escorted him into the building. Now I'm looking at a video of somebody well, breaking meant, a window around, and him coming I meant in around right. the building. No, I that's said, not what you no, meant. No, no, you're misunderstanding. No. Oh I said God. that he did not violently enter the building, and then is that him, guys? Is this him with the thing violently entering the building? Is that who this is right here? Or am I crazy? Show me. What are you looking at? Okay, here. He wasn't charged with any violence. Why wasn't he charged? I don't know why they didn't charge a million. There's plenty of people that they might have could have charged or didn't charge or whatever. I don't know why they charge who they charge. Go ask the whoever the prosecutors are. Or maybe this was another shaman. Maybe there was a second shaman. Or maybe he pleaded. I don't know. Or pled. So do you see him violently entering after the people break down the doors? Well, uh, he's not violently entering. He's entering. Oh, my God. Yeah, the crowd ahead of him, uh, you could say, is violent. They broke in. Although, I will say this. I will say that it's not much more violent than, you know, any of the dozen or so takeovers of the Supreme Court or uh, other, you know, buildings by Democrats, whether it be like local state buildings or Hamas, you know, uh, anti-Israel protesters that take over buildings. That's never called an insurrection. Nobody's ever charged. Does it give you pause that in two minutes I was able to completely disprove what you said because you were believing you the words, not. because you, you were believing the words of a man who was on record admitting that he knowingly lied about something that led to the largest defamation case in U.S. history? Does that not make you think for one minute, hmm, maybe I'm actually full of shit right now? You're believing no, Tucker I, I Carlson, so. you... who cost Fox News like a billion dollars and literally got fired over the intentional lies. What you does believe Tucker Carlson have you to do believe with the video? The because video that was the video is. you showed me. You said Tucker Carlson was the American hero that got the video from Congress and showed us the truth. And well, now I've just showed you that that it. was a fucking lie. He didn't get it from Congress. He just put it out there for the public to see. That footage that they hadn't seen before. You would prefer that that stayed hidden, right? No, I don't know why anybody releases or obscures videos. I don't know if every single video relating to every single event is always released. I don't know what the SOP is for stuff. Well, I'm not sure. Let me just say this. I do think that, uh, I'll just say this uh, in, in finishing, because I do got to go here soon, but I will say that in finishing, I do agree that that 600 or so people, even the uh, 1,000 or so people who got trespassing charges and all that stuff, I, you know, the people made their own decisions, did uh, what they did and they should pay a price for that i'm not against that uh but i don't think one that there was an insurrection i don't think trump incited a the riot um i don't think um and i also think that this is in some ways you know more proof of the two-tiered system only because you know i can point to all these other examples that are very similar to this like uh the kavanaugh when they were busting down the doors you remember that they're trying to bust down the doors of the supreme court to get into the kavanaugh hearings and they did. Video, some, some of them did get in. This CCTV video literally came out in Discovery. This, wait, How? this particular one did? This video came out in Discovery. How did, who was trying to hide it? <laughs> oh. This, that video right there came out in Discovery? Yeah. The one, well, show me, show me that. Because um, it was my understanding that, it was my understanding that, uh, they, that uh, his lawyers were actually making a case that they didn't have access to this during discovery. Um. And in fact, when this footage came out, he was released soon after that, although they claim it had nothing to do with the footage. Uh, 
The government has produced the video shown in yeah, Tucker right. Carlson I I on the Internet Discovery. According to the public reporting, in around February 23rd, the Speaker of the House of Representatives granted television host, oh, this is McCarthy, Tucker Carlson access to a wide range of U.S. Capitol surveillance footage relating to the events of January 6, 2021. Beginning on Monday, March 6th, Carlson's show began airing portions of the footage based on what was shown on television. Pol uh, Pizzola now asserts that the government withheld certain footage of writer Jacob Chansley, who pled guilty in case 21, blah, 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 and the footage was exculpatory to Pizzola, creating a Brady violation. Uh, however, both claims are false. One, the videos were produced in Discovery. Pizzola's motion describes shocking footage of Chansley's walking calmly through the halls of the Capitol with two police officers who purportedly escorted Chansley and apparently other protesters into the Senate chamber. Pizzola quotes Chansley's former attorney for the proposition that the government withheld the footage from Discovery in Chansley's and Pizzola's cases. The footage is not shocking, and it was not withheld from Pizzola. The footage in question comes from the... Yeah, so... While discovery in this case is vol volum voluminous, the government has provided defense counsel with the necessary tools to readily identify relevant cameras within the CCTV to determine whether footage was produced or not. Accordingly, the volume of discovery does not excuse defense counsel for making reasonable efforts to ascertain whether an item has been produced before making representations about what was and was not produced, let alone before filing inaccurate and inflammatory allegations of discovery failures. So this was a lie. You know what actually probably happened? I can, I'll guess here. What probably happened was when the defense was putting their case together and they had this made available to them in discovery because they're not fucking retarded and because they have to make a case in front of a judge and a jury, not in front of idiots like you in the fucking media, okay? Meaning that they've got to deal with people that are swearing in under oath, okay? And they have to do their best to tell the truth. They probably saw the footage and they're like, oh, clearly this is an exculpatory and they just didn't do shit with it. But when Tucker Carlson is proving shit to you, he doesn't have to be honest. He's not under oath. And the only jury that he's trying to prove anything to is the fucking public, okay? Which is full of people who can believe whatever the fuck they want to believe. So, I mean, all, all Tucker did was make footage available to people that hadn't been before. I don't understand why you're so, why that's such a bad thing in your head. I don't... What's, why is it bad when somebody problem? selectively edits and makes something available to you but that misleads what, you about the, the actual thing that edited happened? Footage, but the selectively edited footage is what had already been presented. Here's why, a question, because I, I actually know the answer to this. That. What is the percentage of footage that Tucker Carlson made publicly available to you if he's so concerned about telling the truth? Was it all of it? Or was it less than one percent of it? Take a guess. Um, I know. I'm. I know it wasn't all of it. I know there was mm, other footage. Interesting. Why would he make so little footage available to you if all that he wants to do, all he wants to do, is tell the truth? Well, I think all the footage is available. It's just he didn't like. Uh, he didn't focus on. I don't um, think it's all available. I'm pretty sure McCarthy is the one that passed it all off to him, and I think he made what was it, 04 percent of it available to the public. Doesn't that sound a little weird? If this had to do with anybody with the last name Biden or Clinton, wouldn't you be saying they're obviously trying to hide or cover shit up? Isn't that so well, much no, that's more what was already like, going on. Isn't that more obviously a cover up than anything that you've asserted about Epps, about Comey, about the FBI, about Russia collusion, no, about anything else? It's not. Oh, okay. It's not, then no. that's fine. I agree. Okay, then give me one potential explanation for why Carlson would only release such a small amount of footage. Just one possible explanation. Do you think he well, ran out of space I'm, on I'm a thumb sure drive? I'm pretty sure that he was probably well, he's probably just showing footage that what that lended to the the credibility that that most of the people that were in there were peaceful walking around being escorted that kind of thing why wouldn't he release all like, of it just so that we can look through it ourselves to make that determination if he's really interested in the truth yeah i don't know maybe there's reasons i'm not like i'm not seeing anything super nefarious i mean you don't see anything super nefarious footage? that you came in here believing the exact opposite of reality that you Wait, were tricked what? by a guy who literally was on text saying that he was lying about shit about dominion voting machines none of this is connecting in your brain I, this can't be real life right now you can't be a real human being that none of this is connecting in your brain right now okay destiny are you done okay all right, well, hey, man, that was fun. All right, well, uh, have fun. Yeah. I thought he was going to be like some fucking dude in a suit who was like ex-FBI or like ex-NSA or ex, like some guy that worked in intelligence services or whatever that was running around the Capitol doing a bunch of crazy shady shit and like had a gun in his car and like did some crazy shit but didn't get charged with anything. I thought that was Ray Epps. I thought that was like some, on the level of what. I don't know, Ray Epps was some old 60-year-old vet that walked around the night before saying like we're gonna go to the capitol peacefully guys and then spent the entire next day being like whoa don't fight chill calm down guys like this is the dumbest conspiracy i've ever heard in my fucking life and the smoking gun is him texting his nephew saying i orchestrated it all <laughs> like bro kill me oh my god
But the 50 million statements that Trump made, like that one text to his nephew, that's enough to hang your hat on this entire theory. Be like, absolutely 100%, like verifiably proven. But on the Trump stuff, well, if I don't have a confession written in his blood with at least three of his immediate family members there to verify the identity of the signator, I don't know if I can believe it. Like, that guy was implying that you're authoritarian because you want traitors to be punished, and somehow he outed himself as a fascist for saying based and Trump wanting to suspend the Constitution. Did he actually say that? Another cancer grandma. Oh, New York Post. Oh, hold on, there's another grandma. Ex-MAGA granny Pam Hempfell convicted over January 6th warns Trump to not use her for political points. I was guilty. A self-proclaimed ex-MAGA granny convicted in connection with the Jan 6, 2021 Capitol riot told former President Donald Trump to not use a can of Idaho, clapped back at the 77-year-old Trump after he shared a post on Truth Social that read, American Justice, 69-year-old grandma with cancer given more prison time for walking inside U.S. Capitol than Hunter Biden for sharing classified documents with foreign regimes and multi-billion dollar bribery. Wait, Hunter Biden sharing classified documents with foreign regimes. Was this ever proven or was this just a, a random conspiracy floating around at the time? Hemphill, now 70, was arrested on August 3rd, 2021 and pleaded guilty the following January to a single count of unlawful parading, demonstrating or picketing at the Capitol. She was sentenced on May 24th to 60 days in jail and three years probation. She was ordered to pay $500 in restitution. Prosecutors said Hemphill encouraged her fellow Trump supporters to go to Washington for the 45th president, stop the steel rally, precipitated the riot, ran her face, happy new year, on my way to Washington, D.C. on January 6th. On the day of the riot, authorities said, um, Hemphill encouraged others to pass through barriers in front of the Capitol while rioters pushed against them, telling her cohorts, you just gotta come in, it's your house, come on in. When Trump said something, I listen, Hemphill stated at the time, don't worry, he's gonna stay president, there's nothing to worry about. Vice President Mike Pence has got his back. Hemphill's Twitter bio describes her as a J6 defendant who is helping provide facts for his J6 gaslighting. According to prosecutors, Hemphill only left the Capitol after other Trump supporters said he had tweeted that they should go home. Okay, hold on, because this guy is saying, the drone tech guy is damning me, he's saying, Ray Epps didn't get 60 days, he didn't get anything until people kept asking why. So she went inside the Capitol, that's probably, I don't think Ray Epps ever went in the Capitol, right? I don't even know what Ray Epps got, oh, I think Ray Epps eventually got convicted for misdemeanor. Um, was her thing a misdemeanor, or was her at a felony? I don't know, look at the statement of facts I linked. You think there's an effective way to actually engage with Trump slash Q conspiracy theorists? I've been told to look into street epistemology, but it seems pointless if you can't get a baseline of reality. Um, uh, the honest answer is that like, you have to start from a way, 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 way more diffused uh, position. I don't, I don't think a conversation with a Trump will can start with a debate about any of these things. You have to lay down like some very, very, very fundamental epistemic baselines um, before you ever, um, can get a conversation off the ground. So like, I imagine like if you really want to, a conversation would have to start with like, hey, so just curious. Um, what are some ways where we could determine like a person's state of mind in regards to committing a crime? Like it would have to like start off like that um, before they even know what you're talking about. Because if you, um, yeah, because because once you've gone into their world, it's over. Like you, there's nothing. Because uh, by the end of my conversation, by the end of like part one of the conversation with you, he like fully admitted that Trump attempted to coup the government and the protesters were to do it. What did he say? Because it only took me talking for like five minutes where he was like, yeah, they were there protesting to try to stop the certification of the election. Sure. <laughs> it's like, they, bro, that's a coup. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's a coup. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Jesus. But also, there's a lot of videos of the Democrats saying they're concerned about uh, vulnerabilities in voting machines. I, I don't know, man. Pursuant to Federal Rule of Criminal Procedure 11, the United States by uh, attacking the U.S. Capitol. Okay, Pamela Ann Hempful. The amount of people you talked to recently that said some kind of, how could you just read Trump's mind is crazy. Especially when they're reading the minds of everybody at the FBI and, all, and the entire DOJ and everybody that's worked with Trump. They can read all of their minds. How can conservatives not feel deeply embarrassed when confronted with information like this? I would wanna rope myself. 
Remember, the whole point of an echo chamber is to like virulently discredit outside sources. So the cope is easy because there's like, there's two strategies. One is the, they're lying, they're lying, not true, they're lying. I only believe what these people show me. They're lying, they're lying. All the institutions are rigged, all of them are lying. What did this guy in this conversation say? You've got the media, you've got the government, you've got the institutions, every single thing is a lie, right? Um, that's the first part. Um, and then the second part is always the relentless whataboutisms. Like Donald Trump told Pence to throw out the election. Isn't that kind of a coup? Well, what about when Hillary Clinton said that he was an illegitimate president because she thinks that Russia, um, you know, like hacked her campaign and did fucking disinformation for him? Like, so do you agree with me then? And you just also want me to condemn Hillary or are you, are we like, yeah, I don't know. Okay, who is this guy even in a voice room? I don't, I don't see him anywhere. How do you plan on handling the whatabouts with Alex Jones? Because you know his, oh, I don't know. We're just gonna start screaming, I guess. That's what we'll do. Okay, I don't think this guy is in any, I don't think this guy's in a Discord room. You guys lied to me. Oh, this guy just linked me the setup thing. Oh boy. Sounds like a setup. Former Capitol Police Chief gives his account of what happened on January 6th. Former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund gave his account of what happened during the Capitol riot on January 6th, 2021 in an interview with the, the Daily Caller co-founder, Tucker Carlson. I didn't know Tucker Carlson was a co-founder of the Daily Caller. I had no idea. No, wait, do we even know what the daily caller is? I might be mixing this up with another daily or something caller. Sun, who was present at the Capitol riot, alleged that federal agencies withheld information and warning signs of potential dangers in the days leading up to the riot. His previous interview with Carlson and, uh, on his former Fox show never aired. Sun said the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security privately expressed concerns of possible violence breaking out during the Stop the Steal rally, but did not include this information in their intelligence assessments, nor inform Sun of their concerns in order to prevent the violence. Think about it. I am the chief of police at the United States Capitol, probably one of the most prominent and should be the most secure building in the United States in the world. You know, you'd like to think of that, Sun told Carlson. But when you look at it, and don't take my word for it, look at, there's now at least four congressional reports talking about the intelligence failure, IG reports, uh, GAO reports, talking about various intelligence failures, but coming into it, you, you know, think about it, FBI, the Washington field office, didn't put out a single document, a single official document, specific to January 6th. So this is the, it was a setup because of an intelligence failure? Is that, okay, gotcha, strong argument. Intelligence agencies only thought about 20,000 people were going to be there, 30,000 at most, ended up being about 120,000. Yeah, um, that was what was more or less in the, J in the January 6th Select Committee, that nobody realized that Trump was gonna do that speech and then send all of his supporters from that speech to the Capitol afterwards. That seemed to be the one of the big hinge points on the, um, on the failure for them to predict as much of the violence, I guess.
what is this? What are these weird claims made in this interview? He alleged then, or he alleged then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi did not authorize Sun to bring in the National Guard to arrive at the Capitol despite his pleas. But Pelosi wasn't the one making the call here. What a weird thing to put in here, okay. Doesn't seem like people really want to get to the bottom of it, Sun said. It really doesn't, and it just gets worse. It just gets worse from there. It gets worse from there. Sun got approval to bring in the National Guard at 210. Before his approval, he alleged that he begged several gen generals, including Michael Flynn, to bring the National Guard. The officials apparently told Sun that they did not like the optics of the National Guard as he allegedly begged for their assistance to intervene. This sounds like a setup to me, Carlson told Sun. I'm sorry, but it does. <laughs> I guess the setup was every single person involved in the national security or whatever was all going to let the capital get st Yeah. Wow, this is deeper than any of us even knew. My God. Crazy. I wonder if any part of this has him ass assigning any of the blame to Donald Trump not taking any action whatsoever as he sits there sipping his Coke. Like, I'm sorry. Hold on, because like this guy's still spamming DMs. He's like, no, they knew. They incited and allowed it to happen for the propaganda onslaught that we see now. And to see as and to use his justification to take their main opponent off the ballot. Drone tech, if that's the case, wow. Imagine how you could defuse imagine how you could defuse literally this entire plot. Entire plot. It would have been at 1 45 p.m. Donald Trump getting on his phone and tweeting, go home. Instead of at 2.20, tweeting out, Pence has failed us. Or, hold on, drone tech, do you think that Trump was also in on the Capitol riots then? Because Trump was encouraging it the entire way because everybody was, wait, okay, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, I'm trying to, exp hold on, oh my God, my mind is going into seven dimensions. So everybody in the government is in on this riot. All of them are in on the riot. Then why did so many people go to Trump begging him to stop it? Or did they go to Trump knowing that if they go to Trump and beg him to stop it, it's actually gonna encourage him to, to instigate it even harder with his tweets? Why would they have gone to Trump at all? Why wouldn't why wouldn't they have just not said anything? Or what if Trump would what if they would have gone to Trump and he would have said go home and then completely refused it? Does that ruin the entire massive conspiracy? By the way, that would be the worst conspiracy in all of US history, because that's where we're alleging right now. What we're alleging would be the well, except for the 9-11 conspiracy, but the Jews did that one, so I guess that doesn't count, right? Oh, and I guess the COVID conspiracy, but that doesn't count because the Chinese did that one. Um, or I guess the Hawaii space laser conspiracy, but that doesn't count because the Jews did that one paid for by Oprah Winfrey Winfrey and Bill Gates. Um, and except for the what, what other what what conspiracy are we up to now after four fucking years? Like Jesus Christ or the the vaccine conspiracy that I guess David or, uh, Fauci or whatever is making all of his fucking money off of, or the Russiagate conspiracy that I guess Mueller and Comey and all these other lifelong Republicans were making uh, their something off of, or the... Okay, I don't care about this. We're done. Okay, let me just... Or the Dominion voting machine conspiracy, orchestrated by Venezuela, that Tucker Carlson and everyone at Fox who said they were lying about. If this was a grand conspiracy involving everything up to the Secretary of Defense, why didn't they rope Sundin on it? <laughs> why wouldn't they why wouldn't they just get this one more guy in on the conspiracy? The chief of the Capitol Police. Why wouldn't they just get this one extra dude on? You're telling me these guys compromised every fucking layer of government and law enforcement, everything. All of them were in on it, but they couldn't get Sundin on it too? Is this like the one patriot, the one Bro, I can't. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm done. Okay. Okay. All right, we're done with this. Destiny claims to not believe in conspiracies while simultaneously believing Trump conspired to overthrow the government. I don't believe in conspiracy theories, meaning when people allege crazy plots with absolutely no evidence. I believe in conspiracies when there's proof for conspiracies. So for instance, somebody on Trump's legal team circulating a memo for how to undemocratically steal the election, and then Donald Trump trying to do the exact same things that were circulated in that memo. 
That would be something I would believe. Because that happened. And we have proof for every single step of that. All of it. Are you all satisfied with Destiny's answers for why Ray Epps is a victim? Yeah, he's a victim because dipshits like you took the most random smattering of facts and tried to paint this guy as the leader of an insurrection. Despite the fact that, like, every single person there came from Donald Trump's rally 30 minutes earlier when he was saying we need to go to the Capitol fight like hell to take our country back. They're trying to steal your election.